Hi, everybody. Welcome back to episode five of the Honorable Ones podcast. BR, I did it again. Welcome back to an episode again. they haven't did been you here hear for. It? Yes, sir. Episode. You know what? Is it even really the Honorable Ones podcast if you don't do that in the intro? That's a, I don't know. I'd be a staple. I like that we're only five episodes in at this point, and we still and we have like running gags already. And I can't help but feel at least two of them are my fault. Well, how many running gags do we have, bro? I, like the biggest one is, has got to be the bleach video okay, yeah, by a mile, true. right? And then this one uh, with me introducing <laughs> the episode. I think those are those are the only yeah, those two are so like far. The main ones, I think. Those are like the the running gags, but. You know, I don't know, man. <laughs> With five episodes in, I mean, I think we're on to a good start. I think if we, you know, keep going at this pace, we can have several failings on our part that are just jokes within the podcast. So, you know, that's nice to know. All right. Now, before we get started, I have a few things I want to say to you, the person listening. All right. First thing, I know you're watching and I know you're not hitting that subscribe button. And first of all, Thank you and fuck you. Because here's here's the problem, right? You think you're being helpful. You think you're watching the podcast. You think you're you think you're being a good little YouTube viewer. Well, I'll tell you something. You're not. And here is why. A good, honest Christian YouTube viewer <laughs> is gonna want to watch the podcast all the way through at 0.5x speed. Like every single podcast, uh, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. Because you know what happens when they subscribe, BR. You know what happens? Uh, they get money? No, that's not true. We're broke. Um, what do they get? We get mm -hmm. the fucking community tab, true. which is really what I want for this uh, podcast thing to go live. Because like, I want to do polls and fan questions and stuff on the off time between episodes okay. so we can like talk about them the following uh, week or whenever we shoot, right? And so this is my uh, a call to action for you guys. You know, I'm using my YouTube terms, so you know I'm taking this shit seriously. Just hit hit like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think. You know, hit us up on Twitter. Our social media links are always going to be in the description. If you follow either of us on uh, YouTube and like hit up our socials as well, man. You know, we, we would love to hear from you guys because <laughs> uh, our last episode was when we heard from you and we had a whole episode based off of a fan request and I'd love to do more of that. So uh, sincere call to action. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe and feel free to let us give us any notes. So that, that was just my little two cents. You, if you uh, have anything you want to say, BR, uh, before we get started about the topic, I mean, feel free. I think just leaving any questions or things you want us to talk about in the comments or, you know, stuff like that or DM either of us is also always a good thing. Um, if we misunderstand your question, <laughs> like last time, we may do like <laughs> four versions of it. So, you know, you know, strike while the iron's hot, if you will. But um, I think we can jump into it with two series that we always talk about, actually, that dropped this week being always. My Hero and JJK. And, you know... I think we usually drop it, jump into the My Hero one first. So you want to do that? Talk about that. What are our thoughts on the chapter? Did we like it? Did we not like it? You know, things like that. Yeah, I, I want to talk about it first purely. First of all, about a note about both chapters this week. Did you notice that they were weirdly, like, really short? Because, like, when I read them, um, I read them back to back. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I read them and I'm like, that's it? It was just like eight pages. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm to me, I'm always like that when I read the chapters just because I typically like both series, so I want them to keep going. But I actually think... This chapter was a little, for JJK at least, I can't think about My Hero off the top of my head, but I think it was a little bit longer than last chapter, actually. Last chapter was like, last really? chapter was like 23 pages. This chapter was like 25 or like something like that. Um, I think, I think the thing is, this one huh. is almost purely action. So you're scrolling a lot faster. There's a lot less dialogue. There are pages where it's almost completely um, choreography for at least JJK. So I think that makes sense why it went by so much faster. Um... And for My Hero, I mean, there was a little bit more dialogue than usual, but I think that My Hero 1 was actually shorter. I think this was, like, less than 20 pages or something like that. Yeah, because it felt a little, not uneventful, but more like, it, it felt like the thing that happened shouldn't have been the only thing that happened in that chapter, if that makes sense. Like, this felt like an A story without a B story. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I you, felt that a little bit for My know, Hero. Um, less for JJK, because I felt like it kind of... I wanted more, more things to happen, but I do think it's progressing at a nice pace at the same time, if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it does. And uh, I want to get straight into My Hero, because like I said, I did feel it was much shorter, and I do want to talk a little bit more about Jujutsu Kaisen mm -hmm. uh, in general, and actually a little bit beyond the scope of this chapter, because I, uh, I texted some of the topics to you uh, yesterday, yep. BR, and I, I have a feeling you have a lot to say about all of them. I do, yep. So we can, we'll, we'll like really get into JJK, but let's first talk about My Hero. What did you think about the chapter? Like overall, just general thoughts. Um, 
it was such a fine chapter. Like, I'll put you like, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very lukewarm mm-hmm. on it because what I think I wanted to happen didn't happen. And this, oh, this is going to be the third fucking meme. It's about which one of us is like more bloodthirsty, <laughs> dude. I swear, every time we do a podcast, we like exchange who's more bloodthirsty. Last week it was you. You're like, yeah, I want to see Megami just bathed in his opponent's blood. You know, major, like, it's it's fucking berserk it's energy violent. if you don't just, mind just pure violence i mean yeah. violence yeah exactly and before that uh, the week before that it was me talking about how ichigo was like a massive wussy not like murdering everybody <laughs> that he comes across yeah yeah and i have a feeling that like the torch is being passed back to me this mm-hmm. week because here's the thing man it's not like i expected deku to like just shred ayama in half mm-hmm. <laughs> But at the same time, I didn't think it would be as amicable as it ended up being, especially for how short the chapter was, because let's be real, man. It was really funny. And I'll admit, I cracked a smile. Like, I actually chuckled when Ayama like, went to attack Deku. Mm. And, <laughs> and how Gakure, like, jumped in the middle. <laughs> Not only that, but, like, even if it hit him, it wouldn't have done anything. Yeah, I don't like <laughs> that. That's why. That's why I was a little confused because I was like, "Bro, Deku's not really like gonna be hurt by like naval laser, dude. Like, na- what has naval laser ever done in the series? Um, like the the only thing, the only damage it did was to uh that guy's mask, the the magician. I forgot his name, but like that was it. That was the most damage yeah. naval laser ever did. And like, dude, I'm crying just first, thinking about listen, it because it yeah, was Hag- Hagakure yeah. took it and like didn't take extensive amounts of damage. That just lets you know that Deku would have quite literally just eaten it and just kept going. I don't know why he blocked like that either. Because we see him like after Aoyama shoots it, he, Deku blocks like it's something that he has to worry about. Like, bro, it's it's almost just a flashlight at this point. Um, I know, and I'm like, yo, aren't you the main character? <laughs> what <are you> doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what are you doing? and like it was such a bad like reaction on my end because the moment was played totally seriously ayama and his parents were like crying and like water just coming out of every orifice in their (laughs) face dude and then he's like trying to hit deku with the fucking lumix 3000 (laughs) (laughs) and Like, I'm happy Horikoshi even acknowledged how ridiculous it was as an action because, like, Deku caught him and his parents in, like, a second, yeah. right? And, like, like it was it was literally, like, no sweat off his back. But it was just still really funny to, like, having, having seen that play down the way it did. Yeah. And what I really wanted from uh, the Aoyama thing was more a sense of background than we got. Like, I wanted more... Um, what did he reveal to all for one? What was the scope? Did he know anything that could help them with their plans, extend the deadline even further beyond the Stars and Stripes uh, extension that they got, et cetera, et cetera. But we got that in like the span of three panels mm-hmm. in like very, very quick flashbacks. And then we spent like three pages out of like the nine for this chapter. It focused on Deku giving another teary eyed This is some major season one Deku energy and I can't fucking stand it, dude. You think so? He was like... Oh yeah, you're such a good guy. <laughs> you know, like that, that's like how I that's how I read the dialogue. Oh my god, I think we have a little bit like differing stances on this chapter. So I will say, I like with the first point, I agree. Like Aoyama, because it, one one little detail I just noticed as I'm like kind of going through it again is Deku's danger sense went off, and it's like now this is like just for all the people watching. This isn't like a genuine criticism of mine. It's just more of like a funny nitpick thing. Like, Aoyama presents practically zero danger to deku i honestly am like bro how did danger sense even go off like how are you activating that aoyama (laughs) but like on a more serious note i do think that having deku subdue them quickly is a good idea is was a good idea i don't think a prolonged battle between them would have been able to be taken seriously um and i think it would have just been a waste it would have been a waste of pages in my opinion um it it literally would not have been believable I do like that Deku in the chapter is shown to be somewhat aggressive when he initially sees the news. Right? Like, even though he's crying, he's crying because it's his friend, but he also seems, like, genuinely, like, slightly, like, not like Deku versus Shigaraki enraged, but, like, visibly angry and somewhat furious with Aoyama, right? I do like that he's shown, like, he's a he's human, 
he's not necessarily just this all forgiving like um this benevolent deity of of heroism or whatever he's a human being um yeah and I, but at the end it did kind of i i go I, down I guess so but like to me i just feel like that is kind of the purpose like you don't have to like it but i feel like it's just so blatantly obvious that this is who he is right like for example you know forgiving bakugo or thinking that he can save shigaraki like i don't think i'll put it like this right i don't think it's fair to get mad at deku for something that's integral to his character when that's the point like in my opinion right if these criticisms because i've seen a lot of people not necessarily just for you but um like on twitter and things like that these criticisms are like oh you know deku's just this little you know little baby or whatever blah 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 he's like <laughs> he's like he's too nice it's like bro he forgave someone who bullied him for his entire life and told him to kill himself he, he's basically willing to not necessarily forgive, but save Shigaraki, someone who's quite literally at this point a mass murderer. Um, and he's also, and he's yeah, also like that's a character flaw. I, I do think to some extent, um, his altruistic nature is like a flaw. I don't think necessarily wanting to save Shigaraki is flawed, at least if I'm understanding what he means by save. But I do think his altruism does go too far sometimes, and I think that's the point. I think that's like a that's a written in character flaw. Like that's not a criticism of his character. But he also is like, well, okay. Like overhaul. He's he's willing to save him from Nagant's bullet. It's clear that Deku just is simply a hero first, right? And what heroes are primarily are not people that beat villains, but they're people that save other people. So I think Deku doing his best to rationalize Aoyama's um, being a traitor and things of that nature is fine, and it's in character. And I, in fact, I think it's honestly, I wish. This is one of my like main criticisms, not to this chapter in particular, but just in the entire series. I do wish there was more internal struggle. Like I just would love to see what he thinks about consistently in his head, right? Sometimes like how we get with like a Yuji or like a Megumi or something like that. Um I I just I just would like to get in the head of Deku. But for the most part, I do think this is a good chapter at illustrating the struggle of a hero and the difference between the main character and everybody else because everybody else is either heartbroken or like disgusted or or like um just what's the word i'm looking for they're just like delusional about the situation but deku takes it at face value and he's like okay you know let let's you know i'm gonna act in character and let me you know let me do what i would normally do and i think that's fine i think you don't have to enjoy it but I do think that's the purpose of my hero at this point. You know, speaking of the goody two shoes thing, I'm curious what your take is on uh, on the subject because I can let me let me distill my thesis into a statement, and you can kind of derive my question from okay. there. Right? I'm okay with Deku not killing, but it bothers me when Ichigo doesn't kill. Um, I mean, I think you I think I think that's fine because they're two different types of characters. Um, you you know what I'm trying to say? Because like I'm having a hard time phrasing it into so, a question. So basically, and, like, um, why why do you why are you okay with Deku not doing it, but Ichigo not doing it is a problem? Yeah, and I, you know, I don't think Deku's necessarily a coward because he isn't. But like, how do I put this? Oh, I have a great I have a great comparison. Deku's probably closer in terms of personality to like Urahime or something, oh, yeah. in my opinion, uh, where he's willing to heal people who hurt them and uh, to uh, hurt him and his friends like like the shaving uh, shigaraki thing is a great example of it right and you know with urahime that thing that first of all pissed me off to no end like i really especially with ukiwara like like just let him die mm -hmm. like it's okay it's okay it's okay he's a fucking like demon monster thing mm -hmm. he can die it's okay but no like she has to heal him whatever it's neither here nor there but with deku uh it did kind of grate on me when he said he wanted to save Shigaraki, but not to the same degree. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious if that has to do with this, like My Hero Academia as a series, or if maybe it's because the scope of My Hero Academia's universe is very much like street I think, level. I know? think the difference is Plus. is like expectations are naturally set within the series by the context of the series. So like when you see like Biakia murdering um, an Espada, you see Kenpachi like bisecting Noitora, or you see you know ichigo vapor like like throwing out nuclear gizuka tenshos you i think i think what happens is you start to like expect a certain level of violence right you expect a certain level of um like you know gore. like the, the rules of engagement yeah. are, are established yeah. yeah and with my hero heroes typically speaking don't kill humans right that's not something they normally do. That's not, it's not necessarily a hard and fast rule of like you aren't allowed to do it. 
But I'll give you an example. Hawk's killing twice is like this stain on his legacy or like this stain on his character. Not a, not from like a writing standpoint, but like a stain on who he is, right? On the quality of his morals. Yeah. Because he killed him, right? Killed a villain that was extremely but, dangerous um, to the, the hero but world. See, um, but see, the thing that I, uh, I wanted to... Like the, the way I picked up on that in terms of reaction from the citizens in My Hero Academia... Mm-hmm shit was that it was a kind of akin to um like a, a cop killing somebody who was holding someone else hostage okay yeah where where, where it was kind of like a uh, i chose the victim's life over the perpetrators mm-hmm. or, or something along those lines i don't know i don't know the exact like cop speak for it but um it, like i figured it was kind of just explaining like, no, i agree that is that's definitely the rationalization what i'm saying though is, is like Hawks is probably one of the... um, No, no, but like, even, you know, everybody, especially the people in Japan, especially the people in Japan, my God, are very well aware that this is like an all-out war at this point, Mm -hmm. right? It's more like the government has basically collapsed in everything except, like, officially. Mm -hmm. Like, like, it exists insofar as, like, the section of government that's like the shadow organization (laughs) where they're like in front of gigantic windows plotting you know the trope yeah I, yeah like, that, like they have a, yeah, I understand yeah. What you mean. um but like i'm like yeah that's that's the last pillars of government really right like it's, japan's basically done right guys yeah <laughs> like like we, like we can wrap this shit up and it's it's like a, it, they're f- very much fighting a war for god survival because shigaraki like just wants to kill motherfuckers you know he doesn't want to rule he wants to kill yeah. and I don't know. It, it it still weirds me out that Deku's not willing to go down that route because okay, heroes are basically cops if you think about yeah, it. Yeah. They they it, I don't know. It just seems Oh, oh, I I know what it why I I know, I know the phrase. Do you know what um martial law is? Is that where like Yeah, I I think I get the gist of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I just figured Deku understood that and like that's the vibe but i guess not. i I don't know it's 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 very strange i think it's like a fundamental ideological like disconnect so like how do i put this by at least this is my rationalization right i may be giving deku a little bit too much credit not enough credit whatever right so if people have different interpretations Mm -hmm. that's fine but i look at it as deku has this like ingrained idea of what a hero is a hero is somebody who who saves people with a smile on his face and you know to some extent there's some variations right and that's been ingrained in him since he's been like four years old by all might right um Mm -hmm. so anything that deviates from that causes an internal like like massive struggle within himself that it's, it's like a cognitive dissonance right by having to do something that is literally the antithesis of saving somebody taking their life to deku saving people is what makes a hero right his end goal is to be a hero therefore anything that is opposite of that right contradicts his personal beliefs killing somebody is as far as you can get from saving a person right at least that's how i think he views it right um Mm -hmm. so far right we've gotten a little bit of a hint from um we got a little just from horikoshi himself that like death is a form of, of saving somebody in certain circumstances i don't know if that's the path that he will take though in any case you know death to him is is like the opposite of saving so killing anybody <laughs> regardless of their their morality or things like that is simply just against who he is right it'd be like it'd be like expecting somebody in a in a negative situation it'd be like expecting yuji to um go out and murder people in cold blood if at all like because you know even yuji yuji has killed people um but not only has that been a, a major moral struggle for him, he usually does it unknowingly. Like, nine out of the ten times he's actually taken a human life or, or something that isn't a curse, he hasn't known. And the other time he did, it was literally the only option to get back into the fight, right? I simply don't think he's been but pushed to that extent. Jujutsu Kaisen is kind of an inherently darker manga, though. I agree. So it's kind of, yeah. And I, uh, yeah, I, I see what you mean. I, I guess I just, um, like I said, it doesn't necessarily bug me it's just something i've i've been like eerily aware of and i just haven't figured out like how to respond to it it, it, like for some reason it doesn't feel real with deku right it it feels like his decision or his philosophy is still being molded Mm -hmm. and i think that isn't too far off from where the actual story is headed considering that my hero academia's timeline and i've mentioned this multiple times at this point 
uh, during this life cycle of this podcast. But, you know, Deku and My Hero Academia, their journey is like two years in, Mm -hmm. year and a half since the beginning of the series. And I feel strange. uh, It feels strange to to think of Deku as having fully developed anything. He like he hasn't even fully developed his powers. You know what I mean? I have this sense, at least from my reading of the story of My Hero Academia, that it's kind of building to a point where Deku has his Superman General Zod neck snapping moment. And I don't know if I'm just like completely misreading my hero because like you said, like Deku's character is like so inherently uh, save, 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 don't like kill is like not even on the table right it's not even it's not even his last resort and granted he's never actually been in a situation where he's needed to confront Mm -hmm. that because it's so funny deku and my hero academia as a series have always dealt with their villains defeats in a very like the exception of like nomu Mm -hmm. here's this really powerful attack that'll sap 99.99999 percent of their energy Mm -hmm. but just won't push them over the edge to kill them it'll be like enough to arrest them like like, knock them out or things like that yeah despite all that i still have the sense that you know that next snap is coming and uh whether it's shigaraki or somebody else i don't know what what do you think you think deku's got it in him to 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 go over the edge i don't think so personally i think that if we were going to get that moment the like villain hunt arc where he was by himself would have been it personally i think that like the time for edgy deck like not to just reduce it down to edgy but it's just the simplest way without like restating everything said the time for like edgy deku or things like that or for him to like take on these burdens by himself blah 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 i think is somewhat past um and i i think there's still going to be a moral like struggle obviously at the end of the series with him shigaraki all for one all that good stuff but i just don't think mm-hmm. it whether or not it'll come down to a uh, like a, a struggle of like oh i have to kill him or else he's gonna kill me i think the problem is going to be what does saving look like for somebody as far gone as shigaraki um and i mm. think that's gonna be the the moral problem isn't gonna be like because maybe killing is what saves him right but i think that mm-hmm. deku will still only kill him not out of rage not out of like necessity for survival but only if he thinks but, it, that can save like mercy? yeah like a mercy kill type thing um mm. because Grand Torino told him like when Deku was leaving he was like yeah you know don't forget that like killing is a is a form of like saving somebody right now whether or not Deku believes it himself is fine but we do know that he's he's dead set on saving Shigaraki and if they want and if Horikoshi wants to go with like a a way that's you know slightly edgy slightly a little bit more like geared towards like the older fans or like the fans that just want more violence but still wants to stay true to My Hero's themes, I think that's the best way he can do it. If not, Deku will quite literally save Shigaraki, have him arrested, and have them hopefully, re- like, reform or something like that. But I don't know. It's still, it's still a little bit iffy just because I don't know what saving Shigaraki looks like yet. I just think, I just think that he's going to yeah. save him regardless. I mean, honestly, you know, All for One is literally one of those villains that I feel absolutely needs to mm-hmm. die. Uh and I don't even mean that in like a very malicious way. I just think he's like a virus, right? Like the only way to stop him is to be rid of mm-hmm. him, because uh, locking him up clearly, clearly did not help. Didn't work. <laughs> clearly, yeah, it made everything worse. In fact, because not only did he get like a duplicate body, but like he broke out of that prison, that super dangerous prison full of like other super dangerous people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean. I, honestly, what I think is going to happen is Shigaraki is going to kill all for one. Um, like in this, like they're they're um, the vestige world or whatever. I think that's what's going to happen. I think Shigaraki will rid himself of all for one personally, or maybe Deku will help rid him in like the mental sense of like you know, like um, all for one's influence on Shigaraki's body is gone. Shigaraki kills all for one himself, whatever. Um. I just don't think Deku is going to do that. I don't think Deku is going to get all for one's hand, blood on his hands because I don't think that's his narrative. I don't personally. I don't. I don't see that being his narrative right now. I think it's a. It's everything is leading to Shigaraki and Deku's conflict, and however Horikoshi wants to get there, I think the series will end, or at least it'll end. Or no, Horikoshi said this like the last arc or or act or whatever. I think the series will end yeah. on this conflict. To be honest with you, uh, the impression that I get is just that it'll probably end with Shigaraki finally uh, surpassing One for All's will and then taking them both out in a blaze of glory. And that'll be his redemption, his Darth Vader moment. Uh, And that'll be probably the end of it. 
Um, I think that was a lot more intense discussion than this chapter probably warranted. <laughs> yeah, because we started talking about more like overall My Hero kind of stuff like that. Yeah, which um, it all started from, you know, Aoyama <laughs> yossing a flashlight <laughs> at Deku and then getting him and his family tied up two panels like yeah <laughs> god I st- I, i'm sorry I, i'm still thinking about that um overall i'd say it was like a six out of ten chapter seems a little high even like 5.5 for okay. me uh I don't, what about you i don't know the seven out of ten i think it's pretty good i mean i wouldn't eight out of ten is pushing it for me i think that's like borderlining that, that really good air arena if you will um but i do think it was i liked what it showed for deku and i think i've kind of manage my expectations on how Horikoshi is going to display his character. Would I have wanted more internal, like, struggle? Yeah. I would have liked to hear his thoughts more um, to himself, maybe doubts of whether or not he can save him, things like that. Um, but personally, I enjoyed what I read, so I'd say 7 out of 10 is, is a pretty decent one. Definitely not a, a great my hero chapter but, you know, a, a de- definitely a solid one for me. But, you know, speaking of solid if not great chapters, mm-hmm. we got to naturally talk about Jujutsu Kaisen's chapter this week. I mean, oh man, that chapter was already... so fire, Dude. man. That was so, it was unbelievably good for me. I mean, as a Megami fan, is it everything you ever as wanted? As a Megami fan, bro, I'm, it... oh man. Oh uh, yeah, I was popping off on Twitter. I was freaking out. I, I saw, bro, you were gassing. Yo, literally, the last four episodes of this podcast, all you were like, is I want to see Megami fuck some shit up. Yes, I want to see some. I want to see blood. Like, I wanted I to see, see some real shit. I wanted to see some yeah. And guess what? Akutami, he Akutami finally been he reading did my it. tweets, bro. He, he was like, you know what? He, you know what? I got you, right? That was fire. I was I was showing people the parallels between Megumi and Toji. It it was so I, it was so dope, bro. I I responded to that on Twitter. And I was like, bro, I totally fucking missed this. What the fuck, yeah, man? It's <sighs> honestly, it was fire. Um, I reread. Go I reread off. the chapter, so I obviously read it like initially, and then I read it on like uh, the the mm-hmm. like the scan, not the unofficials. I like both translations a lot. I think they both add quite a bit. Uh, well, honestly, I just like rereading, seeing Megami go off, right? Seeing Megami yeah. fight, like the way he threw out Max Elephant to like blow that guy out of the building, and then he just started beating that guy's face in. And mm-hmm. dude, that was oh man i was like we'll, we'll, we can get into it more in depth but just overall general just hypeness aside that was super dope i was like I'm, I'm here for it i'm here for megami just getting like in comparison to yuji who's trying to be like squeaky clean megami willing to get himself dirty for whatever he needs to do to get the job done type thing bro i'm so happy because it, i never realized it until that chapter but uh gege has never written Me- megami to be necessarily squeaky clean yeah. like He's only ever had to go up against, like, curses, mm-hmm. first of all. And then that time he did uh, actually go up against a human, for some reason, I think it was because he never actually was the one responsible for killing, mm-hmm. uh, uh, what's his fucking name, the blonde guy? Uh, Naoya? Wait, is that where No, 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 uh, you remember when he, uh, activated Maharaga before oh, the Haruta? second fight, it was to fight yeah. Haruta, yeah. So, I was like, it never occurred to me that Megami was, like, going to kill that guy with his technique like, like I, I don't know why it, it just i guess the sukna of it all kind of overshadowed yeah. that whole th- interaction and you know eventually it was sukna that killed mm-hmm. him uh that killed haruta in the end but you know ever since then megami's never really had to fight Demons, let yeah. alone uh kill yeah and uh when i finally saw that uh chapter and it, going back two three weeks with that panel where he was like i'm not like yuji i'm willing to score the 100 points myself I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. He probably Man. is. Like, like there's no evidence to the Maybe contrary. He outright says he's not a hero. Like, he's a sorcerer. Like, he'll do whatever he needs to be done in order to enact his version of justice. And I'm like, I like... In, the, in fact, it's caused conflicts for them in the past, right? That's when, like, uh, early on in, like, their first real mission, when they met the, the, the finger bearer, Yuji and him were just deadass arguing because they're like, dude, Megami's like, dude, I'm not carrying a dead body that was, like, an asshole. <laughs> I'm not carrying him out of here, right? He's not worth it. Yuji's like, bro, I'm going to save him, right? And Megan's like, dude, I'm not doing that. Like, that's simply not happening. And that argument would have gotten yeah, even deeper if this finger bearer did not, like, jump in. Yeah, first of all, I, I wouldn't have liked Megami's chances even then. I'm just saying they were both kind of weak, but, like... Megami's dog walking that close. Co- the, you know what? I want to get back to the Yuji versus Megami yeah. thing, because I think now it, it'll be more interesting than ever. 
uh, like where they're both at in the story. But for, uh, just keeping on this t- uh, topic for a little bit, I find it so interesting that I never got that vibe from Megami because if it was Nobra in that situation, I wouldn't have even blinked. I would have been like, yeah, I can imagine her killing like that. Yeah. Like I'm trying to snap. Yeah, like like easily. And uh, like it's not like a mischaracterization or anything. like I, I don't know. I. I, maybe I just missed something in the reading. Like, am I crazy? Like, like I like for not getting that vibe from Megan. I to me always. I mean, I didn't necessarily think he was super bloodthirsty, and I don't think he is even now. But I've always gotten the vibe that Megami justifies every. Like to me, if any of them were to like, like I don't think Megami's going to turn to a villain or whatever, right? But if any of them were to yeah. do that, I could easily see that happening because Megami is willing to justify anything via his own morals. He's like, bro. I'm, I don't really care about, like, your whole bullshit ideology, right? You disagree with me on a fundamental level that I cannot correct, so we're going to fight each other, right? He did that versus, like, versus Kamo. I want to pull up the chapter so I can, like, kind of, like, quote him or at least get the, the paraphrasing correct. He said, uh, I, I know the yeah. scene you're talking about. He was like, uh, if not, we'll curse yeah, each other. Yeah, 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 right? Like, Kamo's, like, you know, trying to empathize with him. He's like, yeah, bro, we're both in, like, horrible family situations. You're with the Zenin, uh, you know. I'm with the Kamo clan, blah, right. blah, blah. And he's like, dude, so I don't that care. That was his first mistake. Yeah. yeah, he's like, I'm not with the Zen. Yeah, and he's, like, and he's like, bro, even if I am, like, who cares? Like, I, like, I don't really, it doesn't matter to me, right? He's like, I don't care yeah. if I'm right or wrong. I only believe in my conscience. Like, he's just outright saying, bro, morals are what I decide them to be, for him at least, right? I know, and I love that about his character because, you know, other characters do that shit, but they never explicitly say it, and you just kind of assume... You know, I'm making a lot of Christian jokes <laughs> this fucking podcast without even realizing I'm about to make another one. But I was going to say, you know, most other Shonen MCs act with this like they never say it explicitly like Megami, right? But even their uh deuter antagonists, yeah, the, deuter yeah. the, the secondary yeah, yeah. They they all kind of function as like upstanding Christian people who who really abide by the whole thou shalt not kill you think bit, do? bit. Or not deuteragonist. I because mean, for me, most yeah, I do, like, are super, are super, or the edgy counterpart, right? To me, yeah, yes, but here, like, it's it's not the same uh, broad brush that I'm painting with shonen okay. MCs, and I do acknowledge that. Deuter- uh how did you De- say it? De- Deuter- Deuterogonus. That's how I personally say it. Deuterogonus. If you say it wrong, or if I say it wrong, who really cares? It doesn't really matter. Yeah. The comments will let one of us <laughs> know, or both of us. But yeah, they are usually there to keep the protagonist's hands squeaky clean, like, he won't kill you. Dot, yeah. Dot, dot, but yeah, I yeah, will. Yeah. But with protagonists, right? It's usually like that. Like very squeaky clean hands are, you know, ninety nine percent attack that I mentioned yeah. earlier. And I always wondered about that because, you know, like like in uh, Bleach, just because I'm actively in that mindset right now. You know, Ichigo and his crew, they know what the afterlife system is all about. That's essentially what the world building and uh, power system are all about. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the afterlife. I'm like, yo, Ichigo, why don't you kill more? Like. You know what happens to them when they Yeah, it's die, not like it's not know? a blank like, void. It's not like you have to worry about like, you know, nothing being there. I get what you mean. Yeah. I'm like like even with like the um uh substitute uh, with the fullbringer arc, for yeah. example, like killing Ginjo and then uh, uh what's his name? Sukimisha. Sukushima, uh, yeah. Yeah, Sukushima. He saw him again in, in yeah. Soul Society. I'm like Yeah. yeah. I'm like, yo, Ichigo. I mean that's that's fair. And, and especially with ho- and especially with Hollows, I'm like, yo, do these guys a favor. Not killing them is technically more cruel because Soul Reapers are supposed to purge them of all this shit, yeah. dude. And some of these guys were were like heinous monsters that need to like be sent to hell. Yeah, I mean, I can only like, dude, that guy from from seeds from like the first arc. He was he was a he was a monster. He was probably one of the biggest monsters in the entire series to this the, day. Um, the one that killed Ichigo's mom. No, 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 I'm talking about, like, the one that killed that kid's mom and then the oh, kid. Oh, yeah, no, he was, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, the kid was, like, a yeah. parrot or whatever, like, yo, right? He turned into a bird or something? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm like, yo, I can only imagine, like, what, what Saisal Aporo, for example, did as a human to, like, because you see what shit he does as an Iran card. My God, dude. Like, this guy needed to go to hell. <laughs> and, you know, I see Ichigo letting them all, like, not all of them, obviously, but, like, not killing them and i'm like this is horrific like like to, to my eyes as a reader that's just like cruel horrific and so bad mm. you know it, it's just it's just a bad thing to not kill them 
And, uh, I, you know, I, I, I guess that, <clears throat> that that's just where I stand with that. But with uh, bringing it back to Jujutsu Kaisen, right? I don't get that same sense of frustration because I get the sense that characters like Megami understand that. They're like, but like, it's even better with Megami's case because like, he doesn't know if there it really is an afterlife or a higher power or anything along those lines, right? He knows that there's like cursed energy and like what he can do. And that's pretty much it. Like he, like he, I'll put it to you this way. The closest thing he's seen to like a demon or an angel is a cursed spirit and they want to kill and eat humans. So his, po and his powers are basically to kill them yeah. and stop them from doing that or whatever. So from his perspective, yeah, there's no afterlife. Fuck this shit. I can, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, kill and save who i want to because it's the world as i know it and as I, and as i see it is just wholly unfair and in my opinion it makes megami a far better character than someone like ichigo mm -hmm. who in my opinion it's just his worldview is inherently flawed to me and he acts as if he doesn't live in the world he inhabits and i think i don't know with megami it, it's like a hand to a glove yeah, i mean i i guess i guess i get it um i I don't even know if I disagree that Megami... I mean, I probably would say Ichigo's a better character, but I do... I mean, this isn't to knock either of them. I just think their purposes are completely different. Like, um... Now, I, I want to get this praise for Megami off. I do like the sort of moral ambiguity that this allows for, because if Akutami wanted to, he could very easily turn this, like, super dope, you know, everything the fans are voting for him, you know, the fans are hype about him, into, like, this relatively dark and twisted thing where Megami starts doing more, you know, worse and worse actions and justifies it by his conscience or whatever, right? Um, or he could just mm -hmm. make it so, you know, Megami is able to do what many other people are not able to do, which is justify their killing or blah, 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 by what he decides is, mm -hmm. is right or not, right? I think, honestly, mm -hmm. like, as Megami's, you know, focusing more and more, I think he's living truer and truer to who he is anyways i think killing is just it's almost it's almost a formality for megami i don't think this is something that has been out of character i don't think this is necessarily a development form i think this is a milestone i think this is a a marker that you know in 30 40 chapters we'll get to look back on um and things like that um if, if that makes sense so like not necessarily something that this is new for him but that this is like something he's changed into but rather something he's always been, and now we're seeing that visualized. Dude, I 100% agree with you, and I'm not even, I love what's happening with Megami. Like, just to be perfectly clear, if I haven't been already, like, I'm absolutely in favor of the route that Gege has taken Megami and his character arc, etc. Now, there are little things that I've noticed with this chapter that did kind of give me uh, Ichigo, good Christian boy, you know, church yeah. vibes. And that was the thing with Remy. Yeah. I'm like, if I was Megami, right? Remy is is number one. I would not care. Like, like the other two guys there wouldn't even be like within my range of sight. Like, like killing her would almost come before my own survival. Yeah. Because she, because just because like, to, to, um, like in this scenario, she no, how, no, uh, I would like, uh, not initially, right? Like it's part of it, but not initially, right? It was just the fact that Megami kind of let her go like, like he, he more or less like passively forgave her and gave her the chance to like run, but she still attacked him. Yeah. You know, like when he, when he was vulnerable and like fighting for mm -hmm. his life. And to me, that's just a more egregious betrayal because for the other two guys, right, they were going to die anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, 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 let's be real. Me Megami, like he went in there for some business. He went in there for some war and he was, he, he, he wanted the smoke, right? And he was willing to give some of his own. But with uh, uh, Remy, it's like, it ran a little bit deeper in that uh there was a what, what did make i'm trying to remember making his speech when he beat up the, those kids in middle school where he oh, was talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. Life he's like he's he, like don't yeah. kill me and i won't kill you right he's like replace kill with yeah. any other word and, and that's how you should live yeah so for me megami's character it would have been way more in line with megami's character uh especially at, like according to that uh philosophy of his to have killed remy first because like yeah <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I get it. I definitely get it. What I think, I mentioned this slightly on Twitter. I think that uh, Remy can be, it, it can be a multitude of things, and I'll go over them really quickly. So one, Remy could be used as a mm -hmm. device to flesh out Megami's character even more. Um, because like, okay, so for example, we see this little speech where he's like, you're, you're, you're like one of those trash who cling to people's words rather than their actions, right? 
Um, this is something, this yeah. is not like a, this is like not a development form, but this is more characterization. Like, okay, even as a Megami fan, this is like something, okay, I'm, I'm glad to know that like Megami is extremely annoyed by people who are basically all talk, right? He's annoyed by people who are willing to simply accept the words of people rather than the actions, right? Cool. Nice characterization. I think Remy's weakness is going to function as a nice tool to highlight Megami's, not only his strength, but his meant like where he's at mentally. So I think that could be a reason she's still alive. Also, I saw this, th not necessarily a theory, but more of just like a kind of analysis. He's so much more rage filled with everybody else, right? So I'm thinking that maybe the like, rather than him just killing everybody he comes across, his 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 problem is like, or his I guess his anger is this weakness that Remy um like has within herself, and he's not necessarily willing to kill her for being weak enough to be manipulated. Does that make sense? It'd be like, yeah, it'd be like, like getting he, mad at a like, child for doing something, like for like listening to a parent and going stealing or whatever, right? You don't get you while, uh, while the child while the child is at fault, right? And you necessarily you would reprimand them. They aren't the person you should direct your anger towards. It's the parents, yeah. and that's yeah, that's how okay. I perceive it. Megami's like you're so unbelievably weak willed and weak in terms of your technique that you're not even worth. Not only are you not worth my anger, but it would be misdirected. Yeah, like, because she was obviously, like, I obviously read her as, like, a victim, which, you know, granted, she kind of is. <laughs> uh, is by that guy. I don't know. I don't know if he's irrelevant enough for me to remember his name. Uh, like the, the guy, but, like the main oh, guy, Reggie or whatever. Yeah. Uh, wow, his name is Reggie. I don't know how the fuck I forgot that. But, <laughs> bro, this is another meme, by the way. It's just me forgetting names. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, obviously the anger is solely direct mostly directed at him but if it, if i think if it were me i i would have gone before this before what you've said uh you know struck me uh it would have been remy eyeball guy then main main guy in terms of like killing yeah. but na but now i think i would shift it it would be eyeball guy uh main guy and then remy and i tell you what though eyeball guy is definitely he's uh, like i want like that was so satisfying okay just especially the way he killed him he went overkill he tossed him out of a window twice he was like all the shit he got on the at him and then stabbed him in the fucking face over and over you know, again you know killed eyeball Loved guy it. right eyeball guy's still alive wait wait who then who the fuck did he, he kill killed the to? person he killed someone before they got to use their technique so let me show you real quick oh so the guy came in he like oh. walked in he was like yeah i'm about to i'm about to beat his ass right and then Megami's me like, all right, bro, I don't even want to know what your technique is. Max Elephant, boom, blast him out of the door and then like uh, beats him up. Eyeball guy is still alive, unfortunately. He's kind of a he's kind of problematic too. He's like his his technique is a little bit of a problem, especially since he regens whatever body part he throws out. Like, did you notice that? Uh oh yeah. Oh my god. Like he threw out his eyeball or whatever yeah. and he has it again. So either he has reverse curse technique, which I honestly don't think is the case. He just seems a little too dumb. He seems to, he does not seem problematic enough to have such a high level ability. Um, so I'm thinking that that's probably just part of his technique. Like, you know, he, he discharges one of his body parts, it blows up, and then part of the technique is that it regens back to him. That's what I'd guess, at least. You know, there is, like, this one rule I want add, added to the Cullen mm -hmm. games, just purely for the fact that it'll, you know, I'll admit it'll probably help out Kenjaku a billion in that it'll do more harm than good but it would be insanely amazing for the story in my opinion so here's here's the rule i would want added you take the you basically take the points of the player you kill that would be that would be that would be a game changer <laughs> that oh it would he, oh my god bro that would be so oh oh man that would be wild that would be insane because you, i you'd know be, you'd almost be disincentivized to gain rack up points from in fear that like you're gonna get hunted down by all these people um yeah it, dude i'm telling you it would add like so many layers to the story and it would be a great time to add it narratively speaking because uh in the last chapter they explained that essentially with uh these stronger players being added to all these different sections of the colonies what it essentially happens is that these strong players essentially rack up all the mm -hmm. points and then uh it basically thins the herd and then the next wave of like 
Cullen games battles is like strong sorcerer versus strong sorcerer until you like do the bracket all the way to the very yeah. end, which in my opinion is probably going to be like Sukuna. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> Based Can you on how like Sukuna versus like yeah. Kashimo or is it Kashimo? Whatever. I can't remember the name because they haven't been in a bro. S- a guy like the the one it's who not used it's... lightning or whatever. Um, yeah, it's not going to be a fight. You don't think so? In my opinion. <laughs> it's Sukuna. I, like, I mean i i agree it's Sukuna, but like that person popped out and was just like where is he like i want to scrap like i don't know i i feel like you you have to either be extremely dumb which is possible okay, okay. or be very confident in okay. your own abilities to say that here here is my counterpoint yeah. toto recognized that megami was about to use maharaga and welcomed the challenge the thing is he had no the thing is you can <laughs> say that like he has no idea all he knew is like a big amount of cursed energy was being used right um mm-hmm. he doesn't know like the technique is impossible for him to know just based off the cursed energy I, and i would say that like that's a little bit different because if we're assuming that kashimo is like i hope that's his name or else i'm just saying some random person's name the entire time hold on let me yeah. let me check that real quick well, I mean, he hasn't really been introduced properly yet. Yeah, it is Kashima. Nice, nice, nice. So I didn't mess up. All right. Yeah, lightning All guy. Right. Um, so yeah. Toto only knew the spike, or was only aware of the spike of cursed energy, which is cool. Whereas Mah- Maharaga is real, like, obviously it's strong, it's fast, it's all these things. But its real problem is, no matter what you do, unless you can kill it in one shot with a new technique, you're going to die. Because it'll just adapt, right? Nah, bro. Uh, no, it's unless your name is Sukuna or Gojo, you're going to die. Maybe, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's it's very possible. <laughs> um, but like, yeah. But y- going back to you know uh, that rule, because like I'm really I'm really happy that you like the the theory, because um I'm super excited about it. If the possibility exists that that rule is like the next thing to be added, I'm telling you, dude, the calling games are about to pop off even harder. It's going to be like a total bloodbath. And my opinion, the death counts will actually surpass Shibuya. And 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 we'll get to a major high point in a series will where Jujutsu Kaisen will basically have its like unofficial, like fully fledged shonen tournament arc. Mm-hmm. But like it's going to be the Jujutsu Kaisen version. So obviously everybody's going to die. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, this is this is like for all or nothing. There's no just beating them. It's you know, you know, give me your life yeah. or or like, win. In, like like the potential it, introducing that rule is the way to set up everybody's like dream matchups. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's the way to set up Yuta versus I don't know, pick oh, a name. Yuta, right? Y- uh, listen, listen. Yuta fighting anybody? Um, I, oh, we got to get into that later. Okay, okay. Yuta fighting. I'll just, yeah, I'll just okay, say this yeah. briefly. Yuta fighting anybody is going to be so dope. Anybody that's not like Yuji, yes. because I was rooting for Yuji when he got bullied. I was like, damn, that's kind of wild. But now that I can vote for him with my full yeah. heart, yeah, I want him. I wanted to see him. I want to see him go out, man. Like, I'll be real. Uh, who is that lightning guy Ashima. that you mentioned? Perfect opponent for Yuta, in my opinion. Like, like just the right amount of um. Uh, unknowability with both opponents because uh, just to allude to our future conversation about Yuta later in the video by the way I, I think this is our unofficial Jujutsu Kaisen episode. Yeah we're just going to be talking about it a lot honestly so yeah we can we can make it that. Yeah so with uh, with that happening right what I imagine uh, the pairing will be like is if uh, to reference our conversation if it's Yuta with all the same powers he had in volume zero added onto the experience he has of like the one year later post Yuji fight to where he is currently Yuta is going to be a fucking monster, mm-hmm. right? Like, like, I won't feel detracted from a uh, lightning guy. I'm just going to call him lightning mm-hmm. guy to keep my train of thought going. For lightning guy to fight him as an opponent rather than Tsukuna because, and I cannot stress this enough, I just don't buy that anybody is a proper fight for Tsukuna that isn't Gojo. Like, I just... You would have to be somebody who understands cursed energy as the... As, a, as an entire field on a much deeper level than Sukuna. And the only way that you're that you're able to is if you have the six eyes, in my opinion. Like, you literally... It's so fundamentally... Like, you just live on different universes, not even different planets, when you fight Sukuna. And, and that's just that's just kind of my take. That's possible, but I think, like, there are, I think there are several ways to bypass, like, the realm of knowledge and, like, finesse that Sukuna has. So, like, um, for example, like, now... You don't misconstrue this in me thinking that Yuta, like, is stronger than Tsukuna or Gojo. But Gojo does think Yuta can surpass him, and he doesn't have the six size or infinity. What he has is, like, in comparison to everybody else, unlimited cursed energy, right? He has yes. he has so much that Yuji, who's seen Gojo, and 
I think sparred with him, I think is implied, right? Is like, wow, mm-hmm. his curse energy not only feels like Gojo, it's creepier, and he has more of it. To me, I think there yeah. are certain, and, and obviously we know techniques. One technique being broken is enough to, like, make it extremely difficult to fight someone. Even someone like Fodder, like Awasaka, is somewhat tricky to fight individually, like, or would have been. Just because his technique is is kind of like a little bit of a difficult thing to work around if you're not super intelligent or if you're just not you're just confused as to why your strongest attacks aren't working, right? So I think techniques yeah. are able to bypass knowledge or like, you know, overwhelming curse energy. So I think that Kashimo if but, Kashimo uses the Yuta fight as either a way to establish his own strength, maybe they come out like both equally damaged or Kashimo has the upper hand, blah blah blah, whatever. I think this can be used honestly either way. Because I think Kashimo is hyped to be super strong, or at least implied to be. And if Kashimo does do well against Yuta or he gets washed, either way, I feel like it's going to be a fun outcome. So do I. I'm just saying, like, if we never get him fighting Sukuna, mm. like, we never get that panel or that interaction, I'll be fine with it. Because Jujutsu Gaisen is an irregular series. I think that's a fair assessment, yeah. right? Like, it doesn't really do anything the way you expect it mm. to. And... It, Gege, I, I picked up on his pattern, I think, a fair amount. Not, not to toot my own horn, but it seems like whenever he sets up something that feels familiar or feels obvious, he takes it in an entirely different direction. So uh, in this case, what I imagine it was like is he wanted to give the reader the impression that uh, because uh, Lightning Guy wa- wanted to like seek out Sukuna, the implication was that he had enough power to fight Sukuna, right? What I imagine happening, you know, uh, if this was a different series, is that we get to that fight and then it's like a really intense battle and Lightning Guy turns out to be like actually able to sort of back it up and in the end Sukuna wins because the story has to progress, right? And I think that's a pretty that's a pretty good uh, guess as to what a different or right, different shonen series might do, right? Like, if this plot point happened in Black Clover, it would happen like that. Yeah. Like, yes, sir. yeah. So in Jujutsu Kaisen, what I expect to happen now, and I know it's going to seem like an oxymoron, given what I just said, but what I expect to happen now from Jujutsu Kaisen's writing style is one of three things. One, they never meet. He gets defeated by somebody else, namely Yuta. I don't know what it, what it is, but I just have this hunch that he's going to fight Yuta. And um, the other option is that he does... Uh, meet him but he doesn't get past yuji Ooh, okay. and then third yeah and then third is that we do uh get a fight it starts sukuna's out he's able to like use his powers because i don't know yuji's knocked out or some crazy shit like that right it's uh, like like he didn't say the word extension so he's able to like use his technique so he's out and then sukuna one shots him after saying i don't know who you are i would be that would be so funny like that would yes and here's the thing i here's one thing i love about like jj kid so there are so many potential to me one of his greatest strengths this is not to you know downplay his character writing blah 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 i think those are amazing as well right overall i really hype up jjk Mm -hmm. one of the best things is the fights so the fact that there are so many great matchups and character things that he can do means that he can kind of not waste a character per se but he can use a character as like a fodder for someone else I would still be perfectly fine because one, I know there's a fight right around the corner and two, it's usually used to hype someone up. So if Sukuna's like this this super big Oonga Boonga strong guy, Kashimo's like, you know, whatever, decimating characters. If we get like, you know, we we see him beat up Yuji real easily. He's like, Sukuna, come on out. I'm ready to fight you. And Sukuna just comes out, flicks his fingers, (laughs) cuts him in half, and then like just walks away. That'd be, that'd be kind of crazy. That would be be. wild and I would be happy. But you know, you know, you're the second biggest Jujutsu Kaisen fan after me, right? So, what do you think of my uh, assessments? Like, of those three scenarios, don't they all sound like JJK th- things? Yeah, they do. That's the thing. And then the crazy thing is, he could bring in another scenario, and I'd still probably fit within what he the writing style he has. So, you know, obviously we can theorize, yeah. but I'm just super, I'm happy to just kind of see how it folds out. And I feel like the cooling game in general is going to be somewhat of a slow burn of like fight after fight after fight because of how many matchups and potential things that we can see are. I can't believe this series is still below 200 chapters. Right? It doesn't feel like that. It feels like a much more veteran manga. Does that make sense? Yeah, like it feels like way more is happening. Because yeah. <laughs> it, 
Um, Jujutsu guys, and this is how I knew I loved the series, right? Like, what really put me off just to kind of deviate from this versus convo, and I want to get back to it because it's definitely fun, but I love that the Gojo past arc was as amazing as it was because usually when they do flashback arcs, it's it's Don't boring. Shit. It's like, like it's so it's so it, boring. It, the fact that a flashback arc was one of the best arcs in the series is like yeah crazy, and that makes me excited for. I don't know if he's gonna do this. I'm not even gonna say I expect this, but if Akutama did a Sukuna flashback arc, that I can already tell <laughs> that it is going to go crazy. That would go insane. Yes, sir, bro. I yeah. I I just I wanted to get that out there. I'm I'm really like in this shit like heavy, and bro, I fucking love that you just let me say i was the biggest jjk fan you just stood there and you just just listened to and here's me the thing it. we all we all which means no, no, it's no, official we all know you're wrong so it doesn't even it's not even something that needs <laughs> to be corrected it's just kind of like you know it's common Listen, sense they say the they say the first stage is denial fair, fair. so how's that anyway, so now? yeah but, uh, <laughs> anyways <laughs> yeah uh going back to this chapter uh and then we'll get uh, further into the fights uh let's talk about the ending with uh, the reveal of the uh, 7.30 comedian, uh, Tabaka Fumiko. I think that's how you yeah. say his name. Yeah, I think he's... Honestly, I this is one... This is one of, like, the only times I have, like, not only zero expectations, I have zero, like, ideas of, like, what he can do. Because yeah. he's kind of... Obviously, here, he's played to be an idiot and, like, loud and rambunctious or whatever. But before, he's, bro, literally, he's played to be super serious. Literally, bro, literally, my reaction was the character's reaction in the second to last page. Just fucking question marks. Yeah. I was like, huh? Like, it's like, yeah. Like, it's like, it's like, like what? Yeah, like, what was happening? Of, and his his outfit definitely raises more questions. I'm like, I can only imagine what his fucking curse technique is going to be. Listen, I'll say this. The fact that he took that explosion that, get, t that made Megami take some damage... I don't know. I think that's kind of impressive. Someone was saying that it might be like a, you know how uh, Nanami's was like, he can obviously like, along like this seven to three ratio thing, he can like do more damage, blah, blah, blah. Um, Someone was saying that he might be able to take, might be able to reduce the damage by a certain fraction or ratio, blah, 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 depending on how Akutami wants to describe it. But I think is, I am, and I think would, I don't know. I honestly just have zero expect, like not expectation. I have zero like, understanding of where he's gonna go with this honestly i'm just as confused yeah. as megami looks in that last page yeah man i think that i think that's a pretty good way to describe everybody's reaction because <laughs> you know the, obviously the big takeaway from this chapter is megami killing him over yeah. but like th this is this is weird it's definitely <laughs> weird um and we know he's like i don't know man like he's definitely not that dangerous well i can't say that he so far he hasn't proved himself to be that dangerous considering he has zero points. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. This is when I don't have predictions on how he's gonna function. I'm just gonna be honest. I want to see more killing from Megami, and I know I already got my fill, but give me more. Yeah, no, I I think neither of us got what we really wanted because I don't know if you remember the convo from I think it was last week or the it was definitely the week before actually because uh, we didn't go into spoilers with Doofy, but. You know when I said I didn't want to see a drop of blood coming out of yeah, Megami's forehead? Exactly, yeah, I wanted him to do it to slaughter. That's exactly, that is exactly what, he, dude, he isn't like the left half of his face every yeah. time he's in a fight, just bleh. Honestly, I'm going to be honest, like I, I wanted that at first too, and would it have been super cool to see him like completely wash them with no damage? Yeah. But I preferred it now that I've seen this? I don't know. But I will say that final panel where he's like, you know, all these ashes, these sparks or whatever. I'm just going to, you know, get rid of them, blah, blah, blah. Um, I am su I'm super hyped that, like, we've seen Toji kind of have a pose like that. We've seen Maki have a pose like that. And now we're seeing Megami have it. Um, Toji wasn't damaged when he did this. But I do like that, like, the walking away from a dead body type of thing. It's super cool. It's a super cool vibe to me. Um, you know, um, I'm really loving the Toji parallels. Yeah more than i think i did because it, you know even if uh akatami just did it purely by accident that's just how he draws stabbing motions yeah. <laughs> and it's total coincidence um assuming he did do it intentionally i think uh seeing a full evolution because it's gonna sound so fucked up but what i want from uh uh megami and from maki to some degree is kind of an evolution of toji without any of his weaknesses mm -hmm. Because Toji was a very uh, hedonistic character, and uh, you can tell that he was definitely not as serious as he 
probably should have been, especially when it came to his fight with Gojo, right? But, you know, I want to see... Megami's not like that at all. He's a very stern character, and he definitely doesn't slack off. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, he he's already, like, removed that particular weakness. And then the other weakness I think that Toji has is um, his restraint, funny enough. Because, uh, you know, he never slaughtered the Zen in clay. He could have, yeah. easily. Easily. But he never did. And it makes me think, uh, when Maki did it, she technically got rid of that weakness. So in some way, they're kind of both culminating to become the perfect Toji. Yeah, I, I, I just, just this I, it makes sense. I think so. I don't think, I think that Nessus like more of Megami. I, no, I do think Maki's parallels are more of like an ideological, not necessarily ideological one, but more of like a. a a, a parallel that functions in totality considering you know maki's heavenly restriction is now complete we've seen not just parallels but like direct comparisons to her and toji i think megami is a lot more for like the core maybe to show an evolution of power than anything um i mm, i don't know it, it's kind of i think it play out more and honestly i haven't analyzed toji as a character as much as i wanted to so I wouldn't be able to draw, like, tell you, like, the the more in-depth, nuanced um, similarities between the two, even if I wanted to. Um, but I can say that I do think these parallels are cool regardless. And if he wants to throw more of them in there, he wants to show me some, you know, some more parallels between the two, I'm all for it. And honestly, another thing I want, I want another Shikigami shown. You know, I, I need I need some. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, overdue. I think with, um, I don't know if Khan is fully dead, but... He's not here right now, right? So I'm I'm kind of I'm ready to see I'm ready to see him pull something another Shikigami out to be honest with you. All right, so I want to like do a hard transition okay. into uh, the topics that I sent you for the week about Jujutsu Kaisen because I have a feeling we're gonna fill up the next hour or two just going into the weeds sure. for this one. So you want to just do it chronologically? Okay, let's go right down the list. Okay, so number one. Is Megami even strong? And I want to get to what mm -hmm. I meant because I have a feeling that it's a very, I'll admit, uh, uh, what's the phrase? Elicits a lot of... It elicits uh, a negative reaction initially of like what, like yeah. what, of course he is, right? The word coming into mind is flamboyant. I, it's not the word, it just starts with an F. Freak it's, um, it, it's inflammatory, right? Yes, inflammatory, yes. So I know it's a very inflammatory question, but like, here's what I mean by it, right? You know the meme about Megami bleeding every fight or kind of having his fights constantly interrupted or him having to win the fights by, like, the very edge of his mm -hmm. teeth? I've noticed that all these things, while not bad in that, you know, it does do wonders for his character and you get to see him obviously evolve with how he applies his technique and everything else, mm -hmm. you know? And he's still doing that. Even in this recent chapter, he, like, whipped out the knife from, like, That was nowhere. super cool. When he pulled it out from the shadow of his palm. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Fanboying over. Go ahead, continue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 100%. I agree with you. It was cool as fuck. But I was thinking about it, and I was like, Megami's technique and him as a character, they're not very obviously powerful. Because I've noticed with um, most characters, especially leading characters, that their techniques are always very much simple is better. You know, Ichigo's big attack is just a strong a slash. slash. Gon's yeah. attack. Yeah, Gon's attack is like a punch. And then, you know, Yuji, Yuji even in the series, he's less... You know, physically speaking, he's just a monster. And like, it's still punching and mm -hmm. kicking, basically. But what that does do, um, while that does do a benefit to the to the main characters, and that it gives you a very obvious indication of how they are as um, combatants as the series progresses, because it's always going to be the same punch with less effort is how you gauge their progress, mm -hmm. right? Like, uh, get to get attention from Ichigo in Soul Society is not the same as it gets to get you from Ichigo, like, now, for example. Yeah, I agree. And you, you know, see he, that visually. It's like, you know, before, like, you know, whatever, it, it didn't do that much damage or the explosion was much smaller, and you're able to see it in a very yeah. linear fashion. And to, to be clear, this is, like, base form, strictly. Yeah. Like, no upgrades, like, no beefs, uh, nothing happening, right? Just strictly base form, total sign of progress, right? Even with Yuji, his Divergent Fist is a great mm -hmm. example. But with Megami, I find it hard to give him the same level of um, obvious progression. And I'm speaking as if like I'm Gege and I'm writing this because he has such a technical curse technique. Yeah. 
it like it like it requires so much uh thinking and so much application of like the many many variety of moves you have not necessarily their power because if he really wanted to get lazy with it, he could just kind of spam Nue and the lightning over and over and over again. And then uh, that would be that way. But, you know, he doesn't do that, obviously. So it presents me with this question, and I hate to ask it, but with that being said, is Megami even strong? Because every time we see him in a new fight, it seems like he's always barely scraping by, and he it's never... I can't visualize Megami overwhelming an opponent. Like, what would that even look like? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I mean, so first to answer the question, just uh, like without nuance, right? I'll I'll give my nuanced answer in a second. Without nuance, yes, he's strong. Depending on what the what the scale is, right? If the scale is Yuta, Tsukuna, Gojo, like no, he's not. He's fodder, right? Um. But what about Yuji? Yuji, he's not fodder. Would he win? Debatable. But he's not fodder to Yuji, I don't think at all. I think they're both, yeah. like, very clearly and dominantly within the realm. They're not special grade sorcerers, but they can fight and hold their own against special grade curse spirits, right? We've seen, actually, both of them do so. Um, yes, but Yuji's obviously had a far bigger... Like, the fight with Hanami, they both technically had interactions with, with Hanami, but they were night and No, 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 Yuji, at that you know point, I mean? Yuji is demonstrably stronger than Megami. He would fold him without debate, right? That's like, you have a clear linear. Hanami could react to Megami and, like, block all of his attacks and did very little damage. Yuji was making mm -hmm. Hanami bleed and break his limbs and things like that. They're just very clearly different. But later on in the series, I think that blur, that line starts to get blurred a little bit. So, like... I think that, so it's kind of weird. So I think Megami catches up pre-Shibuya, like in between, like in the, the Cursed Womb arc. And then during yeah. the Awasaka fight, they're pretty much relative in my opinion. They're both able to... Really? Yeah, to me, because Awasaka like slices Yuji, cuts him. Megami never takes damage, really. Like he gets hit, but it's only mm. hit through a guard, right? Yuji, however, does take damage, whatever. And they're both able to like react to, block, and attack Awasaka pretty evenly, right? Um... And, you know, Yuji has more damage output, but Megami has more versatility, right? That's their kind of swap off. Then after this, I think Yuji gets exponentially maybe an exaggeration, but he gets so much stronger, it's unreal, right? He goes from getting folded. <laughs> so he gets a power up mid-fight, kind of like as you'd expect from a Shonen protagonist versus Choso. Right when he yeah. gets shot in the liver, his cursed energy just amplifies because he's able to take the negative cursed energy, or the negative feelings associated with See, death, and, you know, amplify himself. I wouldn't put his power up at Chozo. I put him at uh, final form. Mahito. I think he powers up multiple times in Shibuya. So like, so it. it so Go I on. think I think the first power up comes from Chozo, and the the power up. It's I don't think it's as obvious because Yuji is so battle damaged, right? In that first power up, mm. his liver is shot, right? <laughs> so the power up only really functions to even out that problem, in my opinion. I think the fear of death transferred into cursed no I, I don't even think that i know that right yuji's like turn your fear into cursed energy right amplifying himself even further then goes and scraps with choso then he gets bullied right sukuna revives heals mm -hmm. his body um we we get an implication later on in the series that sukuna can somewhat make yuji stronger although to the degree is unknown regardless he then mm -hmm. fights mahito gets bullied gets black flash gets whatever gets up again and fights versus him and then Obviously, he has to get stronger because Mahito gets a new form, right? Yuji can't damage it at first, then gets strong enough to dodge, react to, and damage it, whatever, right? So he gets stronger, like, twice. Mm -hmm. Megami, up until that point, yeah. we don't see anything. So I think, like, if Yuji's, like, a 10, Megami's, like, an 8, right? Not a not a difference that's, like, fodder to not fodder, but one where Yuji would pretty dominantly handle the fight. Now we've seen Megami's versatility gone up, would go up, which is his, like, biggest, or I think best trait, at least versus someone like so straightforward like Yuji. And I think it's more mm. relative now. Yuji in obviously 1v1 hand like, you know, hand to hand combat beats a lot of people. He beats many people that are even in his <laughs> grade or higher, right? In terms of like grade. Yeah, like like the the only creature he can't physically overwhelm is Maki. <laughs> yeah, right. And Maki and that was Maki post power up. Like pre like even Maki, mm -hmm. like while she was still superhuman, would get absolutely demolished by yuji because of how he was superhuman to superhumans right and that's wild yeah um 
and then <laughs> Maki and Toji are like yeah. three leagues. Yeah, and they're just that. like they're just even worse, right? To me, yeah. The reason Megumi never comes off as super strong, and I can't blame people for that. I think it's a a somewhat more watered down Jogo effect. Megami simply does not have. <laughs> oh my god! Megami simply does not not pick his battles right because usually it's not his fault. Megami does not get to fight weak people. He fights Sukuna. He fights Toto. He fights a special grade finger bearer. He's fighting four people versus himself right now. He and he and at, and for a lot of the battle, he thinks he can't kill them because of the points thing. So he's holding back versus four people at once. Like in all of those battles. I don't think Yuji handles them very easily either, right? And obviously, in the first, Yuji loses versus Sukuna. Yuji, at first, lost yeah. versus the Finger Bear, getting his arm cut off. Yuji, I mean, even in Shibuya, Yuji versus but, Toto is a close fight, in my opinion. Um, okay, but, like, Yuji's uh, rate of progression is also very strange in and of itself, because... Uh, excuse me? Toto, Toto uh, bodied him for a while there, but he still got up even before Toto taught him any additional uh, lessons about cursed energy. You know, that initial punch and everything following it was like an ass kicking, especially when he had his head yeah. banged against the tree yeah. multiple times. And this was basically Yuji at his weakest in the story, short of like the beginning of yeah. the story. And he still found a way to like not only get up, but like keep fighting from that. And, you know, the, the running joke is always like Yuji gets fucked up beyond recognition the other guy says wow you're insanely durable what the yeah. fuck it's like dude what is <laughs> and this then, like okay i just caved your skull in why are you still getting up yeah and he's like dude is that all you got because <laughs> like yeah. you choose just about that action I, right I think, but i don't know i feel like it's it's weird because they both here's what it is you know what? And it fits within the mm -hmm. theme of, of JJK2 where, you know, they talk about like Sorcerer's Growth being explosive, I think, with Megumi in particular. Yuji does not consistently get stronger. He explodes in strength, right? And evolves to another level and then kind of plateaus for a little bit. And I think the same thing applies to Megumi, right? The domain expansion is the biggest example of that. It's the most blatant one, right? He literally goes from like a grade, a semi grade one sorcerer in strength demonstrably a grade one right he he just he just shows how powerful he is just by being able to use a domain expansion in fact he's beyond what typical grade ones can do considering how we know nanami functions and, and things like that right ug similar black flash literally evolved his offensive options but it showed just or it gave ug a deeper understanding of curse energy which obviously made him stronger blah 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 so i think what i'm waiting for now with megami is that another explosive growth? But back to like the question, the main question being, is he strong? Yeah, he's strong because he's like a grade one sorcerer in my opinion. And grade one sorcerers are just typically strong. Maybe even like you can argue supreme grade one. If you want to say he's closer to like Naoya and Naobito than he is like Nanami. Debatable, but whatever. I think he is strong and he's closer to the top than he is to the bottom. Um, but I think he just has fights that consistently make him struggle and he rarely fights against fodder in my opinion. Like, Yuji, by nature of being the main character, fights just more, and therefore he fights against more fodder. Because, um, like, let's look at Yuji, right? Yuji loses, or at least faces similar trouble to Megami a lot of the times, and the only times he doesn't is when he's fighting fodder, right? Like, when, like, list off times where Yuji's fought dominated his opponent. You know what? You're absolutely right, but the only times uh, Yuji's ever been on the back foot in recent memory aren't even fights like with hikari he was he wasn't fighting i agree back, i don't right? count with, that one he yeah and with higuruma he literally lost his cursed energy so he was just physically trying to survive and he was gonna die yeah, by the was, way like the, if, if not for calling for the retrial like he would have yeah, died and even with calling for the retrial if higuruma um did not have that moral quandary right he would have killed yeah. him because they would have just at best traded blows and Higuruma could clearly survive Yuji's punch, but Yuji would not have survived the literal guaranteed death sword, right? Um, so let's 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 talk about things where he's on the back foot, right? He's on the back foot against Toto. He's on the back foot, obviously, against a special finger bear. He's on the back foot again in the fight of uh, versus Esso and Kechizu, right? 
He's like mm-hmm. he's on the back foot versus Mahito. He's on the back foot versus Choso. He dominates Awasaka, but that's a tag team, and he dominates the Grasshopper Curse, but that's fodder. Like he doesn't he he doesn't dominate real fights very often, right? He does not like unlike a Gojo or something. Yuji is not strong enough to dominate strong people. He's strong enough to fight and maybe win, but there's not a single person that I would consider like in the grand scheme of things strong that Yuji beat in a way that is much more impressive than the way Megami beat strong characters. You know what? I, 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 I'll put it to you this way. I don't want Megami to be weak, right? Like, I, I'm actively rooting for him to have that, like, big anime power-up revealed moment thing, yeah. right? I just, I think what I'm so used to and I've what I've been conditioned to consume is that. Like, I, like a, a show of, like, explosive power. Right, yeah. Domination. Even, kind of like this, like... Like, because uh, typically when a, a new uh, a, an anime character gets like a new ability, it's like you know I'm super strong. You can't you can't touch me type thing. At least for one fight. For one fight, they'll show off their new ability, be like I'm unbeatable. Blah blah blah. Right? Megami doesn't really get that. Yeah. Um. I- but see what I'm. But I was going to say. But even then, uh, characters with technical abilities in other series do you get those moments. Like, do you remember uh Byakuya's, uh moments post uh like as not yeah uh, yeah so what i was thinking about was piakiel is obviously stronger and he has a very technical ability if you break it down right and i i just couldn't get over the fact that like kubo still managed to show him having his like flex moment when he just like shredded gerard valkyrie dude it, like in that first interaction he butchered him like like he- like body and head especially, so I think what I'm desiring from Megami is a combination of that flex that we talked about without you know obvi- without it being like a like a laser beam or some like a big punch like I would expect from Yuji yeah. right, but at the same time I'm looking for something that shows like he's ascended into a, a a power tier higher or like a grade higher i want something along the lines of i don't know like yuji beating mahito or something like when he was like okay you know i've d- definitively won this fight or something like that like a, a clear unambiguous power yeah up. like but it's hard to it's hard for me to picture because there's no way for megami to have that moment without his shinigami being a huge part of it and for me uh there's like two versions of it this is my own like guesses as to what it could look like one could just be like a soft maharaga where he just kind of chimeras all the other shinigami into one shinigami and it just it'll i think it'll look sick as fuck yeah. you know knowing gege but it'll probably be like that his that's like his his shikai if you want to use bleach terminology and then you know, go, go off from there. Would you consider Maharaga his Bankai, or would you consider the, his domain expansion the Bankai? Because for every other character, right? Like a Bankai domain is, expansion is Bankai. Is a, Maharaga is like a yeah. um, is like his his like you know Ichigo when he combines the Sero and the Gaduga Tensho. That's what I think is his uh, that's what I think the sort of uh, Maharaga functions as. It's like the ultimate technique, regardless of Bankai or whatever. Yeah, like. It'll beat ninety nine other ba- like percent of other bankais, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So, um, if yeah, but that's basically kind of what I want to see from Megami. It's either going to be the Chimera thing, or honestly, what I'm hoping the direction's going to go under is something along the along the tune of like him assimilating the powers of his Shinigami into his own body. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, this is like, uh, I mean, I I kind of I kind of get that. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, but like th- those are just my two best guesses of because Megami's powers are very interesting. They're very unique, right? So I don't know what like his big overpower moment could even look like. And, and feel p- please feel free if you have like any uh, images in your head because like I'm, I'm very like, open uh, just like how he could how he could like dem- like definitively show his power. So there's a couple of ways. Honestly, yeah. I'd be thinking about you know Megami how he can show you know be dominant or whatever. So obviously there's control mm-hmm. over Maharaga if he can. If he's able to tame it himself, not only is that a feat in and of itself, but now that gives him a Shikigami that 90% of the verse is simply not beating, right? 90, 99%, 99% of the verse is simply not beating, right? Two, mm-hmm. you either give him a complete domain or you take it to Sukuna route where he makes a binding vow that if he leaves the barriers down, it amplifies the range of the of the domain, right? 
<clears throat> and he basically he basically follows in Tsukuna's so footsteps wait, wait. there. Here's the thing. I don't want to cut you off, but I do want to add an addendum. Okay. So three things. One, um, I don't know if you watched my Megami video or if you did it might it was like a long time ago but do you remember the point i made about like the only way for him to get that strong would be like do you remember all no this? no no uh could you could you just like you don't have to give the the long version but just like a the quick rundown yeah, version the, 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 ver the very 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 short version which by the way if you're listening to this part thank you and i'll leave the link in the thing but basically what i said was that megami's like peak form of his power is uh i'm talking about like surpassing gojo level right is to uh, perfect his domain and to tame Maharaga. Huge obstacles, I grant you. Insanely big. They're not easy. <laughs> but ha if you were to do these two things and combine them, he can, every time he activates his domain, he can duplicate his Shinigami. And if he tames Maharaga and he activates his domain, mm. oh, see where I'm, yeah, I'm going okay. with this? Ooh. Like he'll he'll <laughs> yeah, you'll basically yeah, you'll 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 be fighting an army every time. Like like it it will be the most like insta kill domain or like move ever, basically. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That that'd be quite Especially if the Maharagas have like a hive mind of sorts and if you were to like defeat one a certain way, the other ones can learn from it just by looking and then adapt to that. Like there's n nobody can survive that. Yeah, I mean that's that's why I think Gojo sees so much potential in him. His technique is just inherently super broken. Yeah. So like that's like that was my theory. That was like the point of my video. Please go still watch it. I worked really hard on it. <laughs> um, uh, I, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking nah, to, I to you. the audience. I just want to make that clear. Yeah. Uh, but that's like peak surpassing Gojo Megami. What I'm talking about is something as simple as Ichigo unveiling his Bankai in the Byakuya okay. fight, but still getting, but still like. But but Aizen is still a threat, like that stage of of development. Like I I want to see his Bankai moment. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know because Megami because the power the main power ups you can get is a is the like completion or perfection of domain or perfection of Maharaga. Maybe he could pull out a very broken Chikigami, that could be possible. Um, or he can just further his shadow manipulation to like a different extent than we didn't think of or something like that. Um, the manipulation of other people's no. shadows, things like that. I'm not sure, honestly, though. Yeah, but it, it's hard, yeah. right? Like, it's... Because his ability is just... It's in, it's almost too versatile for his own good, and it acts, it, like, almost, again, too independently of his own body mm -hmm. for it to have a reveal he like doesn't that. Get, he doesn't get which... amps, right? He doesn't get, like, you know, oh, you know, like a John John Ken, like, you know, I've now charged it to, instead of it get, making me three times stronger, it makes me ten times stronger, right? It's more like he's not but, a but better like, fighter. How do you like that's it? Yeah, so, like how? But how do you convey that? You know, it literally. Honestly, I honestly think he's been doing it. If I'm if I'm gonna be completely honest, in these past two chapters, showing Megami's ability to freely jump through his own, his use his own shadows to pull out weapons on the spot, be able to jump through shadows in order to go into like these physical takedowns and then jump through like his Yes, but I'll put. I, I don't know how else to say it except in terms of jujutsu mm -hmm. prowess. There, like, physical strength and an unbelievable technique is what power is in that verse, mm -hmm. right? If you were, like, even mid in either of those uh, categories, the ceiling for you can only be so high, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, for, uh, for Toto, his technique is kind of trash if he's by himself and wasn't as physically strong as he was. Yeah. Because it all relies on his speed to, to react. If he's slow, then he's like he he, he, yeah. boogie, boogie, he just loses its value. I agree. Yeah, and and let's say and let's say he was scaled down to like Maki pre power up. I he, no matter what his technique would have been, he would have gotten he wouldn't have been able to hurt Hanami no matter how many times he clapped. Yeah. I mean, honestly, he couldn't hurt Hanami even afterwards um, until he got like um, playful cloud. It was really Yuji doing yeah. most of the damaging. But I will say, I the thing is, I don't think. I think Megami's kind of like sh he's at least he's straddling the line right now because to me Megami is fast enough and strong enough to clearly not be like physically liable, but he's not insane, right? To me, okay, let me ask you this: Where do you think he would compare to Maki like like before, um, before Heavenly Restriction Ooh. completion? Because I honestly don't think Maki is that impressive back then. She's not. 
But like, yeah, that's why I'm like ooing because it doesn't, it it doesn't. F- Megami seems too powerful for that, right? But I can't. Like, if if you were to ask somebody who's, if you were to tell me somebody who's like a casual JJK like anime only or something, and you're really like, yeah, Megami's like way stronger than Maki, uh, pre uh, her power up, assuming like they know that spoiler yeah. or whatever. It would be hard to describe how, like, like giving. Because all you'd be doing is just showing him progressing as a character with, like, knowledge base, how to apply his techniques. But you'd be hard-pressed to figure out a way to explain... Why physically he's stronger. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, or like, you could just say... Or, like, why he could inflict more yeah. damage. Because that's the that's the, that's the heart of, like, my question, mm-hmm. right? And no matter how versatile Megami can be, the end result for defeating an, another opponent... Like, you're only as strong as your ability to enforce that strength upon okay. others... In terms of like battle, battle yeah. shonen, especially for a series that roughly translates to sorcerer yeah. fight, he can't, and he doesn't so have like an ability case, that like bypasses durability. He has to kill them with brute force to some extent. Yeah, like like it just it needs to like that's the only way you can defeat an opponent like all the way in Jujutsu Kaisen, mm-hmm. right? Like you can be as versatile as you fucking want, but if you're like fighting for survival or fighting to kill in Megami's mm-hmm. case or both in Megami's case, I should say, um, it makes it very hard to articulate how you're able to contend in the same space, if if you, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, I, I agree, but I think where Megami kind of comes in, and so for one, I think his, his speed is vastly more impressive than his strength. I think, like, if you were to, like, try to balance oh my them, God. Bro, he's much faster than he is Not this strong. again, not this what's again. Up, up? No, 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 listen, listen, listen. It's fine, right? <laughs> oh, oh. Um, you could think speed is irrelevant or whatever. Um, but I will say when he has something like Khan, which can rip through special grades, right, with his claws, Megami himself does not have to be strong. Right? He does not have to be I he does not have to be physically strong okay, himself. Then, he has he has tools that allow then, for that. Yes, but how do they get strong? Like, okay, I'll put it to you this way, right? From theoretically, if Megami gets stronger, like he just increases his output of like cursed energy reserve or some shit mm. like that, it should go to his Shinigami and enforcing their powers, it would right? Go to both. So, right. well, honestly, I don't even know if it affects the Shikigami. Honestly, I don't know if him getting right. right so that so like so how do you you see my frustration, yeah. right? How do you power him up overall? Right? Is that basically it? Yeah. Like like how do you? How do you make it so, like, when he unleashes, uh, like, just to keep it on brand with his powers, like, say you don't want to compromise the nature of his powers and you don't want to give him something like a purple aura or yeah. something to, like, show his power. And you're like, you want to stick 100% true to form of his powers, everything you've established, mm-hmm. right? The only way to do that would be of showing something like uh, Demon Dog's Claws being able to penetrate, the, like, a Sukuna Finger Chamber mm-hmm. Heart area of a Curse Room post- um, post Sukuna Awakening versus somebody like Hanami. Like, right? Like, because then if it was, if it was like Demon Dog being able to penetrate ha- Hanami's hide, mm. then yeah, I'd be like, yeah, Megami got way stronger. But you see yeah. what I mean? Like, like, like that would be an example of like keeping true to form. But I just don't see that happening. What I, what I see is just that his white dog died. So it applied to, it combined with his black dog and it made a stronger dog. And it was almost independent of Megami's. Uh, cursed energy reserves his the nature of his tech like like it it almost had nothing to do with yeah him. um i think that that's true we don't know if his cursed energy increasing makes his shikigami stronger we do not obviously it would make him stronger um and manipulate like further manipulation and honing of it also like literally amplifies your stats um at least if we take like kind of what gojo says and like yuta says seriously um, using your curse energy better simply just makes you stronger. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think at the end of the day, something that we might have to accept with Megami is that he simply isn't a brawler in the, the like, in a typical sense in comparison to, like, Yuji, Maki, Toto, Toji. He's a much more technical fighter. Yeah. And I think he, he now, don't, no, this, this it's, it may seem a little different because Suka can be both um, as, like, a technical and <laughs> brawler. But, like, let's take Mahoraga. He wasn't necessarily a like a super brawler type of fighter there. He was violent, very obviously. But he was much more tactical, he was much more intelligent. He was testing out abilities, he was testing the waters, right? I think that Megami will slowly turn into that type of fighter that is never going to be like Toji levels of strength and speed. However, he would be able to yes, beat but... him because 
of X, Y, and Z. Yes, but what, like, that is the hard part, right? Like, he can, like, get, virtu- his versatility stat can be infinite for all for all mm. I care, right? How do you get, like, if you were to pin Megami against somebody like Toji all over again, mm. what would end up, what that fight, I believe, would end up looking like would essentially be him spamming all his Shinigami, Toji destroying them, and then he's left to fight Megami, like, mano a mano, and then Megami just dies. Like, I mean, we've seen some, sort of what that fight looks like, though. So, like, Toji couldn't even kill Megumi when he was... Now, okay, up until a certain point, Toji would have like, definitely won yeah. in the end, right? But the fact that a drained yeah. Megumi was able to literally dodge Toji once, to me, is impressive, right? And it... And, but three things. One, it wasn't, like, real Toji. It was, like, zombie Toji. Two, he used Rabbit Escape uh, to blind him, basically, and Toji hole right through all of them yeah. right like like didn't even hesitate and lastly um i i, I just want to reference this for anybody who might not have known but that megami sukuna fight wasn't as drawn out in the manga it was like not uh the anime extended it is, is what i'm gonna say like they basically buffed megami what do you mean oh they just made it um, seem, like stronger or whatever yeah like they added more building throws oh yeah yeah punches no. and, like they extended yeah, they basically yeah. like megami so, still does like the similar amount of like combat but like Sukuna just slams him into one building, I think. Yeah, like like it wasn't the, it wasn't the balls to the walls, uh, fucking man of steel fight. Yeah, you Sukuna know didn't I mean? like lit like <laughs> start start tossing him through like city blocks and stuff like that. Like, and he pulled out a shigigami. Yeah. Sukuna was like, "Damn, that's cool." And then you know they they started. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Sukuna is even physically strong or if that's just him using Yuji's oh, no. body. Uh, also, ooh, that is like of- that is like oh okay I thought you were about to say I was like. Nah, Sukuna definitely is just strong, but are you saying, like, okay, I don't know if this is, like, her energy enhancing his body, um, but... Yeah, so that kind of leads me into my second question, or second topic, and wow, insane transition, mm-hmm. dude. But, uh, I wanted to talk about Sukuna's status okay. vis-a-vis Jujutsu and the cursed energy thing, because, you know, when he's perfect, uh, what, what we were just talking about... Is he using Yuji's body to do the physical shit that he does? Like, when he's manhandling somebody with hands, right? Like, not using any curse technique. Is that, y- like, Yuji's body being used with Sukuna's knowledge? Or is it just what Yuji's body is it, like? It's literally just... It's just or, replacing all the physical data that, that... Well, okay, no, no, no. Yeah. I, I, think, I think it would make more sense for it to be replacing the data with Sukuna's. Because there's no reason that, that we have, at least, that Yuji has enough cursed energy... To pull off all the techniques that Sukuna does, so I think if we assume that like their like their you know their 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 data is swapped, or even if we say like for example if we try to we try to humor the idea that like um you know we humor the idea that they're the same right like that Yuji's physical stats is Sukuna's and vice versa, well then Yuji should have I'm not gonna say Yuta levels of cursed energy, but I think it would it should be <laughs> much more impressive than it is right when it's simply not Yuji's in fact. In fact, considers himself the opposite of Yuta, right? He's like, yeah, you have a lot of cursed energy and are physically weak. I have, you know, regular regular capacities of cursed energy, or maybe even little amounts. But in like, in terms of just my physical stats, I'm brawlic, right? Sukuna should not be able to open a domain and use other techniques after that if he has Yuji levels of cursed energy, because Yuji's not portrayed to have that much, in my opinion. No, no, no but your thing is predicated upon. Uh... Sukuna like using hacks of his own curse techniques to make up for what is essentially like okay I'll put it to you this way do you think Sukuna's original form physically speaking was weaker than Yuji's body no I don't think so I wouldn't say so right because like four arms two faces like it doesn't seem like he'd be physically weak Mm. in any way right but if that's the case wouldn't that mean like I'll put it to you this way his original body is just different Mm. than a human body so when I see him doing physically insane shit when, uh, you know, he switches with Yuji, what I don't understand is, is he just using Yuji's body better than Yuji knows how to do? Or, like, his imagination just doesn't go that far? Or is Sukuna basically, uh, like, is he, is he using his own, like, I think I think, power? I think, like, I like, think it is you, the second option because... Like, it, so basically, are you... Are wait, you, hold on. Because uh, my, my rationale is that when he transforms into Sukuna... He gets Sukuna's eye color and tattoos, mm-hmm. right? So 
is that but he still doesn't get back like his two faces the other two arms etc mm. he gets back his like other set of eyes I, from what yeah. i remember and uh what i what i read that as is just that this is like some kind of hybrid of yuji and sukuna and what i'm wondering is doesn't this mean technically yuji's the dominant one like I mean, I mean, it basically shown that he is, but I meant like biologically, because you know it's still his physique that Sukuna is imprinting himself on, yeah. right? Like again, he doesn't have the second set of arms, he doesn't have the second face, so he has to be using Yuji's body when he's doing the physical shit because he just he he doesn't have the same attributes as his original body. I I think I so I think I get what the so the rationale is basically because he's not like completely like transmogrifying yuji's body to some extent these yeah. are yuji's stats um yeah the only problem right is like let's look at it this way do you think yuji is just tossing jogo out of a building right with with pure no strength? but like maybe yeah i don't know here's the thing yuji's pretty new at using his uh body and cursed energy in that fashion right we know that you uh, sukuna has like better control of his cursed energy than anybody not named gojo yes or no like, i mean he's, he's uh, definitely like, yeah i would say he's the most skilled sorcerer the, the most skilled like cursed energy user that we know yeah. of right now and and obviously there was a switch in cursed energy uh, uh uh aura mm. if you want to call it that when uh sukuna switched with yuji jogo like instantly was like oh my god he's not his curse entry is not like gojo's at all it's just yeah. evil right but he didn't say anything to the tune of oh, there's just so much of it or there it, it behaves in this manner mm. right it's just evil and i think the um and powerful kind of went without saying but i wonder if that's like the extent of the switch is just cursed energy and cursed technique accessibility and aside from you know the, the tattoos and the eyes and stuff so what i think is that that's the bulk of sukuna's uh, transformation when he becomes mm. yuji however this does not affect his body because that's still mostly yuji's i'd say it's about 80 percent yuji's body even when sukuna switches to it with obvious physical exceptions like the uh obvious physical cosmetic exceptions like the tattoos and stuff however when you get into physical feats i do think that's all yuji with sukuna at the steering wheel okay or honestly using his insane cursed energy to reinforce yuji's already insane Maybe body even more, powerful. even more than yuji no. <clears throat> yeah so i think that's possible it's still fundamentally yuji's body is what i'm but trying to say let me pose this to you how do you rationalize okay. when they're in sukuna's innate domain and sukuna is clearly superior in physical stats to yuji like he like bullies him that was before that was before his awakening with Toto. No, but his awakening doesn't affect his physical body at all. It literally just affected cursed energy. So that's fine. Like, I'm not, I don't care that he gets stronger with cursed energy. I, I, Yuji obviously gets stronger. What I'm saying is Sukuna is very blatantly a faster, and like demonstrably so. It's not, there's no real competition. Yuji can't land a hit. Sukuna like toys with him like he's a no, child. No, but. Right? Yeah, no, no, but there's no indication that Yuji's cursed energy or cursed technique, if he had one, would be removed upon entering Sukuna's innate domain within him. He he had, like, his own physical attributes, and he had his, like, I'll put it to you this way, right? Yuji and Sukuna's connection to their own uh, powers, like, like take them as separate entities for this example. They still preserve these attributes within, like, their own souls or whatever, like, the fundamental building blocks of a creature in Jujutsu Kaisen are, but, like, I'm just going to say soul. And when they uh, talk to each other in Sukuna's innate domain, Yuji is still, you know, clothed the way he's clothed. He still has the same uh, physical attributes the, the same way, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what's interesting, and I don't think that you've, uh, you, I don't think you've uh, even consciously recognized, is that in his innate domain, Sukuna looks like Yuji. Yeah. He doesn't he doesn't look like his original form, which still means Yuji's the dominant personality. So I don't think Sukuna can suppress anything of Yuji's even if he tried. Well he we've clearly seen that he blatantly can do so when Yuji doesn't take the proper procedures to switch over. Sukuna Su Yuji is only dominant in the sense that he acts as like this um this container for Sukuna he's while he's the host. Yeah, yeah, he's the host, right? But I don't think being the host means that, like, when Sukuna takes over, he takes over 
almost completely without like so uh, like after like a certain no, time limit. but you're but bro, you're forgetting you're forgetting the big major like obvious thing and that's yuji can always prevent sukuna from coming out that's actually not always true. right the only you know the only two exceptions at any given moment are if he consumes like enough of sukuna's power at any given moment which at this point is is over like the ten fingers was the peak of that. Like it's never happening again, right? Even if you were to eat all five fingers at once, Sukuna like like why, Su Sukuna is never why, taking why over that way ever again. Like, why do you think he wouldn't be able to? Because um, because ten is kind of like the peak, and Yuji's body at this point has assimilated fifteen of his fingers. So uh, there isn't more of Sukuna's power like left to not be able to handle than he already well, contains. Let me let me, let me rephrase my question. Why do you think? that 10 was the limit for Yuji to be able to consume before his body was enabled to reject it. Because all that, at least from what I'm remembering, all that's implied is that if Yuji eats too many fingers at once, kind of like he, you know, the cursed energy or whatever, blah, 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 Sukuna takes over, right? Or if he's okay. like unconscious the first or whatever. Time, the f first time he ate a Sukuna mm -hmm. finger, he transformed into Sukuna instantly, right? Second time, didn't happen. Third time, it was like a single or... I forget, was it single? Yeah, it was a single time. Like, every time afterwards, that wasn't when uh, Jogo force-fed him. He's been able to just casually handle the finger in, like, a few seconds, right? With maybe a flash here or there yeah. of Sukuna's tattoos. But that's pretty much it, right? Because he's... He, you know, he said it in the first uh, episode, first chapter. It's his body. You know? Sukuna, Suk like, and Sukuna obviously cannot... Like, it's, it's a big point in the story. It's, like, a huge part of the story. Sukuna cannot take over Yuji's mm -hmm. body because obviously he'd be roaming around doing whatever the fuck he wanted right he wouldn't need to make deals with him he wouldn't need to like work around Yuji because because then he'd have control but he doesn't because it's like Yuji is like actively the dominant person in this uh relationship when it comes to uh I'm speaking physically yeah. right mentally sukuna has got him checkmate yeah. <laughs> but like Yuji's the dominant uh host or dominant physical person with that being said right when it comes to shit like cursed energy or cursed technique sukuna's like sukuna's got the obvious edge mm -hmm. so what i think is happening is that the nature of their bond is basically a combination of their best attributes and for uh yuji he has the superior body but sukuna has the superior everything else true, true. okay so let me ask you this then Let, so, let's get to the heart of the yeah. issue 20 finger sukuna in yuji's body versus you know um, hey in period, 20 finger Sukuna or whatever, full power Sukuna. Do you think Sukuna right. and Yuji's body is stronger because of that? Are we counting the finger awakening getting more powerful? We're, we're thing? basically saying both of them are at their natural full power because. No, no, no. Because no. Sukuna is going to be way stronger than his Hain and Peak uh, even now. Like, because his power always increased with the fingers just even being dormant. And after they were awakened, when Yuji ate that first finger, they've been growing in power ever since. Well, so I'm, I'm more he's going I'm more to... asking not not with the not with them resonating because that's just a cursed energy amplification. I'm basically asking Yeah, so I'm asking if we're counting. No, 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 that. I'm I'm removing that for just for this hypothetical. Like okay. we're saying like Hayden okay. period Sukuna versus like um like Yuji slash Sukuna bond, right? Do you think that right. the Yuji slash Sukuna bond is stronger inherently because he's in a stronger base form? Yes. Yeah. I just think it doesn't seem that way because the bodies are just so like appearance wise are just so physically mm, stark. Like like the difference is like a little four arms, two faces, and he looks like a monster. I get why people would like assume that like that would obviously be the stronger creature. Yeah. But for example, Yuji's physically way stronger than Toto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's a Yuji's stature has like nothing to do with yeah, it. Yeah, he's built, but he's not he's not muscular to the point where you'd assume he's that strong. Yeah, he has like skinny boy strength. Yeah. It, it's all in the power of the release, not in the show. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, I do think uh Sukuna Yuji's body would like physically speaking crush Hane and uh Sukuna. Okay. What about you? I'm not sure because I'm just not sure I think that like Sukuna's like you know, physical strength comes from Yuji or not. I just feel like I don't know, it's just I I just personally feel that um his physical strength to me seems so much greater than that of Yuji's like he, um, Megami after seeing uh, Yuji's strength or after Sukuna like tosses him to the air he's like it's not just his like his you know jujutsu sorcery but his his 
his immense physical strength too, right? That's what happens when Sukuna like just tosses him above above a couple of buildings or whatever, right? Um, All and right, then, like, but do you think that? But I personally just think it's a symptom of uh, Sukuna boosting his Yuji stats with his own cursed energy. Because I will one hundred percent concede that Sukuna's cursed energy and cursed techniques are like in a different stratosphere of power than Yuji's. So obviously like his beefing of yuji's body will not be the same as yuji's own beefing of his own body if that makes sense yeah um i, I guess that uh, i guess that makes sense um like oh i'll put the, the best uh, comparison i can make is in mai's technique like if yuta was to copy mai's technique let's it'd be yeah. broken right but it, but like it's still originally my like. Do you get the comparison? Yeah, I, I think I understand the comparison. Like, if he were to copy it and he were to just use it better because he has like a bunch of cursed energy. Yeah. Um. I I get it. I guess we'll. I don't know. I guess it's just not necessarily that big of enough of a plot point, though. Anyways, like I don't even know if I could would flesh that out. Um. Just because. See. Um. I would. I would think it's a huge plot point because this this kind of circles back into why I even brought this up as a topic, and that I'm. I brought this up before to you. Um, I don't know if it was privately or on the podcast anymore, but I was like, what does Cursed Energy consider Yuji and Sukuna the, the creature, right? So if we take uh, three different approaches to this, the first one is uh, Higuruma's approach, right? Let's assume that Higuruma's domain is like uh, a verbalization of how Cursed Energy, the power system, views Yuji as an individual, right? It would then see Yuji and Sukuna as two separate beings because Higuruma said the evidence against Yuji was, wasn't was about Yuji, it was about Sukuna. Mm-hmm. If he's like who, about who killed uh, in Shibuya, right? The, the mass murder charge. That was explicitly Sukuna's, like, the evidence was against Sukuna, right? Not Yuji. Mm-hmm. So there was a point of comparison there. All right. However, if you take it from a different approach uh, with the Culling Games, for example, and you take that as the. Um, uh, mouthpiece of um the jiu- of the jujitsu cursed energy power system uh kogain saying yuji's already enrolled as a player mm-hmm. is not is already strange because he, uh, be. he was enrolled as a player because of, yeah because the sukuna's deal with um what's his name kinjaku mm-hmm. right so then you have like now you have these two already contradicting viewpoints about sukuna and yuji's relationship and the next thing you have is uh, the relationship of, uh, like, about how, like, the higher-ups see Yuji and Sukuni. Yuji and Sukuni, my god. Yuji and Sukuna. And that they basically see them as, like, one and the same. You know, uh, like, he is him and uh, vice versa. And I think this has to do with Yuji kind of absorbing Sukuna's powers and the fingers being drawn to uh, Yuji, essentially. Or, like, they, they, they want to be consumed, is what I'm trying to say. And like so, so Sukuna wakes back up. Okay. Um. So what? What is your yeah, what is your interpretation like it, of that? Like, how do you like with that evidence being said? What do you think? Do you think they are considered a singular entity by cursed energy, or do you think? I say no because it's there's to me there's no way. Uh, well, okay. So what are we saying? So are we saying cursed energy like considers them? How do I want to phrase this? I'm. Uh, like uh, I'll put I'll put it to you this way: If you were to like have a death note or something, okay. right, and you were to write Sukuna's name, would you die? Would that? Gotcha. Yes. Mm-hmm. So like yes, no. Well, I'll put it like this: If you're to write Yuji's it's, name, it's, it's if you were to write right? Yuji's name, Sukuna would die. I don't know if the inverse is true though, because Sukuna's existence is reliant on Yuji's, but Yuji's is not reliant on Sukuna's, right? Sukuna, right now, at least from what we know, right, it could be possible. That Sukuna can survive off the the minority of his fingers, right? Well, hold on, hold on. Let me pull something up real quick. If we had a Jamie, it'd be like pull up chapter, it, you know, whatever. But let me check. Yeah. Um, because I'm pretty sure that Sukuna <laughs> says in like in the Mahito kind of like conflict, he's like, yeah, bro. No, no, no. It's not in the Mahito conflict. When is it? When is it? No, oh, in the finger bear earlier than that. So he's like, he's like, dude. Even if you die, like I could just go to my other fingers or whatever, right? I'm pretty sure he says that. Yeah. Even if yeah, but he wouldn't be awake. Yeah, I still have more spirit like, fragmented scattered around. Whatever, right? Got you. Yeah, but he wouldn't be like Sukuna, you know what I mean? Like he wouldn't be alive. He just he would be, just be he would dormant exist, within right? those he would fingers. Just exist within those fingers. Yeah. yeah. Um. Until like the next vessel. So came. technically, like if we're saying his existence as Ryomen Sukuna as we know him, it is reliant on Yuji because the majority of his body yes. is existent in Yuji right now. Only a fraction. Would be so left. you're. 
so you're in the camp that he's still uh like that that yes he is uh like Yuji is the dominant creature in the relationship uh and that cursed energy basically considers Sukuna an extension of Yuji. Yeah, but the but, but or do you consider them totally so separate? So I'd be like I'd, I'd say it like this, right? So let's say we have let's consider Sukuna like a parasite, right? Okay. Sukuna's existence right now is reliant on Yuji's survival, right? Because he's a parasite, right. he cannot function without the host. However, if you remove yes. the parasite, I don't think that the host necessarily dies. I just think so far there is no way to do, to kill the to kill the um the parasite without killing the host. Mm. Functionally, they're the same thing. Then, yeah, I think they're relying on each other because if you kill Sukuna while he's in Yuji's body or while he's like taking over, he will die. So yeah. And no, actually, we've seen that already. We've seen Sukuna die, and Yuji face the consequences of that. So yeah, I'd say they're pretty much the same in that sense. Yeah, but when you then uh, apply that as the reader, right? Because this is your interpretation as the reader, right? Where I think it gets dicey is in the story and how... That's why I'm specifying how Cursed Energy, the power system, views them. If you were to take a situation where uh, you are a Higuruma or you are a Kenjaku, it seems like shouldn't Cursed Energy treat them the same way if that makes because the calling games and higuruma is the main expansion they work under the same power system and under the same uh, uh rules as like they're no different right they should operate the same way so if for kenjaku they're considered the same person why aren't they for higuruma you know what i mean yeah let me let me re-look at what higuruma says exactly real quick just so i can refresh myself on that so um the, he said the evidence was about the demon inside of yeah you. yeah yeah um Okay, but that, okay. So the thing is, the executioner's blade was still able to be gr grasped, even though it was referring to Sukuna. No, so would that not imply that the no, evidence? No, but no, but that was because no, but that it was only in relation to Yuji being to okay, admitting to it, you. even though it wasn't it, right. So that was purely that was purely a symptom of how the technique operated. It wasn't a system. It it, it had nothing to do it's interpretation with interpretation like, of Sukuna. The person, and Yuji got you. yeah, um, yeah, that's difficult. Ah. <sighs> See, yeah. see, see what I mean? Because, like, well, honestly, hold on. It, I, have, it, I, have a, it, I have a rationalization for this, right? We've we've sure. already seen conflicts in cursed energy as a whole. Let me give you an example. So you know how um, you know how Manto basically says the soul comes before the body, right, or whatever. Um, yeah. In Shibuya, there's this very like small, um, like kind of not conflict, but like little disagreement that him and Kenjaku have on, on the way their curse techniques function. Let me, I want to pull that up real quick because it's a, it's a very small one. It's right after they seal Gojo. Um, It's right after... Ken I know I know exactly yeah. what you're talking okay. about. Hey, you remember Mahito, you said the soul comes before the yeah. body? Well, I guess this proves otherwise. Yeah, he's like, he's like, like yeah, he he's like, can our... They're all connected. Yeah, he's like, can our, can our techniques function differently? Right? Mahito's just like, um, he's like, does it have to be the same for everyone? Considering our curse techniques, you and I practically live in different worlds. So techniques dictate our world, huh? It's, I like that. It's poetic. So maybe it implies that, um, like, curse techniques... So you think it's... I think it's conditional to how the user... You know, uh, how the user interpret it themselves, maybe. So Kenjaku, someone who values strength, chaos, and power, considers Sukuna the primary, right? He considers Yuji just a tag-along, a vessel for that primary. However, mm -hmm. Higuruma, somebody who's kind of someone geared towards justice, does not. Someone who's geared towards the individual and things like that... It could be a primary okay, example see, of their techniques quite literally dictating how they interpret it. See, now that makes sense because then you'd have to enforce some kind of unspoken uh, condition on the part of the person activating their technique on uh, uh, Yuji Sukuna. Mm -hmm. They'd have to say, X is the person I'm using this against, right? But it wouldn't necessarily have the same effect on Y. So, for example, eh, I don't know if, uh, if that's exactly the same because... If you're even able to kill Sukuna, right? If you just somehow mm -hmm. possess that ability, I feel like Yuji would die. But because it's his body, yeah. right? And we've just, we've established we, we, like, we've known he, he will I, die actually because Sukuna killed himself, right? Or he killed Yuji or whatever, and Yuji died from it. Yeah. So like we know that you he will like physically he can be revived possibly, but he will die. Yeah. However, if you were to like kill Yuji, I'm curious if Sukuna would. <clears throat> How do I phrase this? Uh, how how do I phrase this? Yuji's never been in a position where he's died uh, since Sukuna ripped his heart out, right? He's almost died a few, oh, a few he, he times. He got killed versus Yuta, but, to be fair. 
Like you just did stop yeah. his heart, but he just revived him real quick. But I never mind. That's just nitpicking. Yeah, I get and, and, and yeah, I know. But there was that panel where Sukuna looked like he was about to do yeah. something. So what? What I'm wondering, right? Is uh, let's say it was a sincere attempt at killing, mm -hmm. right? And Sukuna, the implication was was that Sukuna was going to fix his heart in that moment, mm -hmm. right? Well, then if he was about to fix his heart, what does this mean? A for their binding binding vow? Does this mean Sukuna gets like? extra goodies or something based off the nature of him giving more than uh yuji's like uh more than yuji's mm -hmm. giving like I don't, I don't know how the nuance of all that works but it also makes me wonder doesn't this mean that more uh yuji is more or less functionally immortal uh kind of because sukuna is actually immortal because sukuna won't sukuna needs yuji for now right at least you know what we know yeah um like even even twenty finger Sukuna, right? Like, it's, let's assume the five fingers at once thing, which I just I don't think that's happening. Let's assume the five fingers at once uh, thing happens, mm -hmm. right? And he does lose control to Yuji. Yuji will still get his hand back on the wheel, right? Like that will never ever change, no matter how long Sukuna is at the wheel uh, when uh, Yuji is incapacitated via the fingers. He will always regain control in mm -hmm. the end. So what I'm wondering is. Will Sukuna just be content to wait 60, 70 more years until Yuji eventually dies of old age, assuming, you know, the higher-ups allow him to live that long? And then, uh, what, revert him back, use use him as, like, a zombie? Like, like, like what's the... What's the... Like, like Sukuna is revived at, at 20 fingers, right? In Yuji's body, like, that's his that's his body at, the, at, at that point. You know what I mean? I simply... So, are so, you asking, like, what is the end game for Sukuna, then? Not as I guess more or less I'm asking God I'm I'm I don't I don't know how to phrase this but it seems to me that Yuji essentially has to die for the story to make sense. Yeah, I mean I do think okay. he's gonna die. Like I I don't think he's not going to die by the end of the story. But yeah, uh, it, it's it's just it's hard to imagine Sukuna going along quietly. Yeah, you know what's a oh let me ask you this because we're on interpretations and things like that of curse techniques. Let's yeah. say that the angel. Um, uses her uh, technique removal ability on Yuji. Does that take away Sukuna's technique to you, do you think? Yes and no. So here's what I'm thinking, right? It's only, from what I've read, it's only the ability to cancel out a technique and only a technique, mm -hmm. right? Yuji doesn't have a technique. And uh, if we were to go along the lines of what we said and she considers yuji itadori to be the target of her cursed energy mm -hmm. technique before she uses it like like that's who she has in mind nothing's gonna happen or it's gonna go down the higuruma route where it erases this cursed energy okay so you don't think it could follow the kenjaku route where if she doesn't value yuji the individual and merely considers him sukuna's vessel well okay so let me ask you this if she considers Su yuji sukuna's vessel and only sukuna's vessel does that change your answer and does that mean that um she will be able to take away his technique no, because she's using it against Yuji. And uh, at this point, Yuji would need to be able to access his techniques in the first place, right? And, you know, even need to rely on them. But then Yuji is still left with this cursed energy, assuming it works the same. Again, this is assuming it works the same way as Hikaruma. Then Yuji would just be left with this cursed energy. And whoa, wouldn't you know it? Yuji <laughs> is more used to fighting without a cursed technique. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do now? You can't take it away. You already used your technique. Yeah. Um, wait, wait. I'm, okay, so I'm kind of confused because you said, like, for Kenjaku, right? Yuji's enrolled in the games mm -hmm. because he's Sukuna's vessel, right? Um, Yuji didn't do anything. He didn't clear any of the things himself personally, yet he's still there. So clearly, at least in some cases, Yuji can, or, or they can quite literally swap in terms of like the 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 barriers that they clear in order for certain things to happen. Does that make sense? Like Sukuna can fulfill the the prerequisites in order to enter the culling games, right? Whereas Yuji doesn't. So do you think that the reverse can't be true where like um you know the angel Kurusu or whatever is like, you know what, I'm taking away um, your innate techniques or whatever, the techniques of your body, blah, blah, blah. And Sukuna now is stripped of it. Now, I don't think this does happen, obviously, but is it po is it feasible yeah, like within the power system to you? Like, based on the based on Maito's thing of, like, you know, our curse techniques dictate so, our worlds, blah, blah, blah. Does that mean that... So, here's why the Yuji Sukuna situation would be more difficult. Like, if it was Gojo, I'd be like, yeah, she could just cancel out whatever technique he throws at her, right? Because Gojo's, at the end of the day, right, he's got a more... um 
not cut and dry, but like he's got um his technique has been explained. More his un- technique has been explained, right? Yeah. Where, where whereas Sukuna's technique, if um what I'm if my, the Sukuna theory that I operate under is correct, which let me just quickly explain if you don't mind. Um I think Sukuna is one of those um copy other people's technique power uh, ki- kind of uh, characters. Yeah. So like all those uh fire like the fire arrows aren't his curse technique. There's of somebody he killed or ate or some or something along those lines, yeah. right? And they're just like locked away in some kind of like vault that he has internally. So that's a theory of Sukuna's like powers that I operate under. What would need to happen is her curse technique would then need to be explained as uh being able to be spammed and being uh and having the techniques and person uh n- be named to cancel out their technique. So if it was uh like unsealing Gojo, which is like what they need her for, it would be something along the lines of uh can against the person or te- it, it's either against Kenjaku or the person whose innate technique uh, is ingrained in the uh in the actual box, right? And then say I am I'm canceling out this particular technique from this particular sorcerer. Assuming that works the same way, right? And it's Yuji's. Like the, again, there's a lot of assumptions here because we don't know that much about her, how her powers work, or really how Sukuna's powers work. If we were to take both of those uh, considerations and say she goes up to Yuji or uh, Sukuna, wait, who's at the wheel when she's like having this confrontation? What do you mean, um, like Sukuna or Yuji? I'm, I'm saying like let's say I mean we can go both. No, it, it's yeah, okay. So in the in, if Yuji's at the wheel, right, and she's like I I cancel out. Sukuna's uh uh what cleave or di- cleave and dismantle two for one special I'm, I'll give it to her right and at this point Yuji's uh he's he learned the technique and it's he's able to use it freely right a lot of assumptions there considering this is all supposed to be within one arc but like a lot like assuming I'll, I'll I'm I'm gonna beef Yuji to that level or uh, buff him to that level what would then need to happen is for uh Yuji to be so out of practice fighting like with his fists and like heavily relying on Su- Sukuna's uh slashing techniques for that to be a fight that he loses, right? Because as far as I see it, she's removing that and only that. And then what happens is that Yuji just goes to scrap and as always he's just like ah shit, here we go again and then he like cracks his knuckles and gets to work. Yeah. Okay. But what if what but, if and now what let's if say, the what if the prerequisites aren't so simple? Because we see like or, uh, uh, or uh, go on. Hold on. And if it's and if it's Sukuna at the wheel, I don't think it'll work either because she doesn't know what Sukuna like the breadth of Sukuna's curse techniques are, just the sheer volume of them, mm-hmm. right? She can't. I don't think she's able to do a sweeping curse technique removal. Period. Exclamation point. Question mark. Whatever. Mm-hmm. But then you're left with like. A guy in Yuji's body, and then he gets the scrap. Yeah, yeah. It's not about so beating I don't, Sukuna because I don't think even removing his technique would necessarily allow you to beat him or Yuji. Or Yuji. Or, beating this, yeah, beating like, them does not rely upon taking away their curse technique unnecessarily. Yeah, but do you think that this like sh- take away? Go, go away. Uh, uh, go, <laughs> go away. Uh, go yeah, away. I'll have a call right now. <laughs> nah, but no, but do, do you think that like her trumpet has anything to do with it? Um, like. If like anybody mm. hears it, then their technique is then removed or something like that. Because I think. But what does technique mean? Like the ability to use curse technique or a technique? Her curse. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Uh, her curse technique can because there's a big any difference. Curse technique. So like, I mean, we're just saying like, um, I think it'd be like. So let's say it's used versus Megami, right? Let's say she blows okay. the trumpet or the horn or whatever it's called. And Megumi hears it. He no longer can use Ten Shadows Curse technique. Not he can't just summon a Shikigami. He can't summon a new way. Whatever the like the very mm-hmm. foundation of the technique, you know, being Ten Shadows, can no longer be used, and therefore no additional, no shadow manipulation, things like that. Similarly, I think it'd be Sukuna. If Sukuna's technique is taking other people's technique, right? That is his curse technique, regardless of the offshoots of it of cleave and whatever and you know dismantle those are merely offshoots of the ability to copy let's say he can copy abilities right if we say that then her then Sukuna hearing it would disrupt the base technique or the technique that allows for these offshoots similar to gojo right he has the limitless but the limitless no he has 
No, no, hold on. He has two curse techniques, yeah. though. So would she be able to cancel out with the six eyes or the limit? Sure, right. It would, it would one or the so, other. But my point is, Sukuna, we don't know if he has multiple curse techniques in the sense that, like... Or one fundamental, or one fundamental one. one. Yeah, I, I get what you right? mean. That, that's my point. So and if he does have one fundamental okay. one, let's say hearing the trumpet would mean Sukuna now no longer has any of the, like, the branching abilities. That's how I think of it, anyway. So, so even if that were the case, I would go back to my uh, answer, which would be... And then what? Sukuna gets to work the hard way, <laughs> like like yeah. you know what I mean. But we we can't. Like, we, there's that's, no. That's fair, right? I I agree. But what what is then like? I just wanted to know what your thoughts on that were in terms of like how it affects him. But there's also the ability for you know team ups and things of that nature. There's also things like you know she does not have to just pull up on Ryom and Sukuna by herself, right? Let's say we throw in <laughs> you know we throw in you know Kashimo up in there. Do what well, you know? Depending on how strong you think Kashimo is. You know, based off implications and Wait. narrative stuff, or blah blah blah, or just whatever, right? Who is he again? The lightning guy, lightning guy. He's like, he's like, oh, Sukuna, okay. where you at, right? That guy, right? Okay. No. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, I'll I'll be honest with you, man. That's a really interesting way to approach defeating Sukuna, and I definitely think it's doable. Like, I'm not throwing it. Like, I'm not dismissing it. I just want to be clear about that. At the same time, I do wonder uh, if. Because because we are making a lot of assumptions about how both their powers work. Yeah, I just yeah, have to reiterate sure. that, right? We don't <laughs> we don't know for sure. Been, yeah, we've just been throwing out head cannons and speculation. Like we literally have almost zero idea, right? We've seen one for we've both, seen one yeah. panel of Kurusu, and I'm over here talking about yeah. If she blows the trumpet, your ability's gone. Like okay, I don't know. Yeah, but I I have a feeling this podcast is either going to age like fine wine or spoiled That's, milk yeah. and no in between. Yeah, there's not going to be we're not going to be partially correct. I don't think it's either going to be. <laughs> now, we were spot on or we were just like we could not be further from the truth yeah exactly so what i'm uh, under your interpretation i think that's definitely a route for defeating sukuna 100 percent, right however <clears throat> i don't feel like based off what i've seen of cursed energy that it would allow for such a drastically imbalanced uh ability to be used on somebody as powerful as sukuna right so from what i've understood the activation cost for t for techniques to be powerful is unreal like unbelievably and un almost unreasonably high even higuruma's domain expansion his like the you know his big fucking move required like four different conditions before he got the executioner sword you know mm -hmm. what i mean and uh the calling games itself insane number of conditions to operate i can't imagine uh the activation cost being uniform for Angel across the board. Like, I can't imagine the same level, like, the same technique working the same exact way on somebody like uh, uh, Mai versus somebody like Sukuna, right? Like, it it, it almost feels like the, the, the cursed energy, the power system, just would not allow for that to happen. Oh, like, it's it just overwhelming strength just bypasses that? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's possible. So, wait, wait, hold on. It's the same philosophy as Awasawa's inverse, mm -hmm. right? There is zero way, like, he, he would he would have been able to withstand, like, a very serious attack from Gojo, right? Like, like the inverse has a very, has, like, a ceiling, and it has a, a, a floor, if you mm -hmm. know what I mean. There are also techniques that so, are like, definitive, yeah. at least in, in the way they're they're kind of like like Higuruma's like um what is it called the sword the ex sword of execution or whatever execution or sword. Yes, but it took but it took him like four or five conditions to sure, get sure, it. Sure. You know he can't just so, like so, he can't just so, pop it out whenever so, he wants. Okay, let's let's look at Gojo's right. Gojo's ability doesn't really require conditions. The limitless, as far as we know, no. does not Hold have on, the on. Gojo's. Gojo's a very very special exception, and also he cheats. So it's not the what do same. you mean? How is he cheating? I, I understand the special exception, but like, because he's just super powerful. And yeah, like well, because um, I I think I explained this in my cursed energy is a cast system video. Fuck me, dude! I'm like referencing my own videos by accident. I I didn't mean to like do that, yeah. <laughs> but I, it just like I've thought about this before a lot. You couldn't tell, but Gojo has figured out a way to cheat the activation cost of his of his own techniques because um, stretching out his own uh. Uh, his own uh, cursed energy reserves mm -hmm. to uh, basically be infinitesimally close to zero every single time. Mm -hmm. According to cursed energy, right? If if we were to take cursed energy and say it was like the tax mm -hmm. man or something, like like you needed to pay your taxes to get the thing. Gojo has found a way to to uh, trick the cursed uh, to trick cursed energy into thinking he's paid his taxes to to get like to activate. Or he's just writing it off. He's just writing off his taxes. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, he's like, oh, I spent, you know, whatever this was worth for this purpose, right? But in actuality, he's got, like, he's got money in the Caymans or something. Okay. Do, yeah, do no, you, no, do you I, get I, the I get thing I'm trying mean. to, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So, so that's how Gojo cheats, right? So as far as Chris Energy is concerned, Gojo's, like, exhausting himself with all these techniques. He's on the brink of death. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, like, that's why I say Gojo's not a really good exception, because, like, he's, he's, he's using hacks. Yeah, I mean that's fair, but like let's let's even use Kid Teen Gojo, right? When he has limitless up, unless you have an ability that negates abilities, you could not get past it as far as we know, right? The 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 like regardless of like your strength and speed, like even Toji, who was like embarrassingly faster and stronger than Gojo, could not get past it without the inverted spear of heaven, right? Which uh like No, no but um here's the thing. One there actually were conditions for that. I remember his brain was fried and he needed rest. And Toji had like sent a bunch of other mercenaries there over the course of like a few days to tire him out and then sneak attacking him, you know, first with the sword through the chest. Like it, it was a, it was a that, layered plan. No, 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 I, no, no, I right? agree. What I'm saying like, is, what I'm saying is the technique itself is not like, it doesn't have yeah, a no, no, limit I, I'm it. getting to it. It, it does. It does. Like it has a hard limit. That's like why uh, Gojo couldn't keep it on 24 seven, the same way he can like post awakening because he just didn't have that understanding so of personal energy that he had post like head you're, you're right? So, point, I, I think. so what you're, I think what you're conflating no, 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 is as uh, a technique and cursed energy reserves. If so, it's like this, right? The only, it, the problem is the fuel, right? His technique oh, itself. Oh, hold on. How do you, how do you interpret Gojo's like brain, uh, fry comment? Do you interpret that as a, as a consequence of running out of cursed energy or the, or uh, him fry, uh, like the him frying his, its limit? Well, him, he doesn't fry his brain by using the limitless. He would have fried his brain. Um, if he tried to consistently use, um, like just by using the limitless, he doesn't fry his brain. It's just by consistently having a curse technique activated, which I think is just that, that is, I just think a euphemism, not a euphemism, it's just. Um, an exaggeratory way to say you're exhausting your body, like which I think is pretty obvious. No, no. So I read it. So I read it as um, like like a uh, filling up, like needing to fill up a tank of gas. Like 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 he just he he's extended beyond what his body can handle in terms of activating the technique and the cursed energy required to keep it, you know, uh, going for so long without suffering any adverse effects, right? Because the um, way he solved it, it kind of reveals um, how it happened, how it works in the first place, right? He resolved it by constantly using reverse curse technique to like offset that uh, that effect happening, mm -hmm. right? So uh, if we were to assume reverse curse technique heals you physically, or uh, does it heal your cursed energy reserve? I, I don't know. I'm um, uh, not sure. I, I, I doubt it, right? I'm not sure. Well, honestly, like, well, wouldn't it? it I, mean, it'll, I don't know. Because it can definitely, it can definitely heal. Uh, I'm talking about healing others, yeah, no, no. by the way. Oh, oh, oh so you're asking if it can heal others, cursed energy um, reserve stuff. Yeah. So here's the thing: when when reverse curse technique heals other people, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the, I don't know if the effect heals their bodies and their cursed energy reserves, or if it just does their bodies. However, what I do know 100 percent is that if somebody uses reverse curse technique on themselves. It takes a hit off their cursed energy reserves because that's technically activating a cursed technique, right? It still requires cursed energy to do that. You don't regain it back. You know what I mean? Well, why do you say that? Because it uses cursed energy for the, sure. But like, if you use cursed energy to gain, uh, uh, it's it's the same reason like perpetual motion machines don't exist. You can't output more energy than you put in. You know what I mean? Like it just it just doesn't work like that. Well, sure, it doesn't like, work like, really in reality, right? I agree. But like, what I'm saying no, 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 is no, even even. No, but even like these powers have a heavy emphasis in reality. Like even Gojo's uh, technique has some basis in like. Well, they they, they in like, fact cursed energy. In fact, cursed energy. Like Gojo's is a perfect example. Like the limitless actually works on no. an impossibility in re in our reality, right? The only reason it does work is I, I'm, by splitting finite distance into infinite amount of halves, again, right? Yes, but Gojo's like the worst example to use for any of these because again, he is using hacks. You used them so as an example. I, you said Gojo's is. is, is I, I know that. that that was that was like my mistake. Uh, what I meant to say was like something similar to uh, I don't know. Uh, who has a really technical? Oh, the twenty four frames per second guy. Sure. What about him? Yeah. Right. Nabito. Nabito. Right. Um, that was like a hard limit on his powers, and it was such a. It was like based off actual animation, right? He could not do a movement that a defied physics, and b uh, he was stuck. Like, whatever movements he had planned for those 24 frames, he had to do them. He could not, like, veer off the path. So, 
in a similar light, right, I do think that a good amount of cursed... Because, like, let's be real, right? I don't see it bending in that way. Because, uh, okay, even like even if we were to take the anime of it all or the manga of it all, right, and we were to say, yes, it, re it just fixes you right up, brings you right back to 100%, it narratively would not make sense, and in story wouldn't make sense, because the only person that can do that is fucking Gojo. Sure. But there's no other Gojo, is there? Like, once you activate the technique and like yuta even right he still uses his cursed energy and when he uses reverse curse technique it just his his pool is just so disgustingly it massive matter. it just yeah. doesn't make much I think yeah the, i think the problem is there's variations in terms of reverse curse technique skill right yuta like at least from what we've seen almost for sure can't use it as well as someone like sukuna can right like mahito implies no he definitely no, no no he definitely that can. sukuna can reverse uh, idol transfiguration right no, no i want to reference your video okay. now you know I'm, i like to i like to be i like to share around here and even in your video you referenced that somebody of uh who's the ice lady's name uh i don't know but i know who you're talking about um Arame. yeah yeah, got yeah. You. yeah she 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 could use reverse curse technique to uh cancel out the damage from chozo's piercing uh blood but she couldn't cancel out the poison in it if that makes sense yuta could filter out the poison from uh naoya's blood yeah. for for instance so I think he is closer to being able to use it on the same level as Sukuna than he is uh, her. No, for sure. He's definitely, like, better at, like, there's, like a, there's definitely different extents. But I think that, like, Sukuna just casually regening an arm and, like, regening a heart himself. And then being able to, at least, Ma we haven't obviously seen it, but Mahito's like, yo, he can reverse idol transfiguration or whatever, right? I don't think Yuta's just portrayed enough reverse curse technique feats to show that. All he's done is, like... A brought UG back after he stabbed him in the heart, which it's crazy that I even have to say just Sukuna's has done. It's not as impressive or what he's implied to be able to do. It's not as impressive. I'll put it like that. But in any case, right. Um, yeah, I, I mm -hmm. guess, I guess my point is like, sure. There are some, there are certain techniques that very rigidly are, are limited by like laws of physics, like 20, like the 24 FPS technique, right? But Gojo's yeah. is like a spit in the face of it being limited to that. Now, Cursed Energy as a power system is limited, but I don't think it's limited to real-world physics and, like, logic. It's limited within its own in-universe logic, right? So, like, Gojo's... I mean, Gojo even says, states outright, that, like, is limitless. Like, the best way to explain... Let me see. I want to try to paraphrase it. When he's fighting against those, like, clone... The, the, the clone guy or whatever... He's like, let me see. Even still, right? Uh, I don't know how we deviated to reverse Chris technique. Yeah. Uh, do you remember what we were talking about before we went down this rabbit hole? I think we were talking about like, oh, you were saying like, um, like the angel's ability wouldn't be able to take away from Sukuna or whatever, just because of like a limit, a hard yeah. limit on her techniques, like potency. Yeah, yeah. So, do you disagree with their needing? with a hard limit being necessitated because oh i remember how we got sidetracked what i was trying to ask you was other than gojo right because he's the worst example to use for any of these uh hypotheticals mm -hmm. right um do you see anybody who has a sweeping curse technique across the board same same like uh payment method for every purchase if, if i mean we sense. have some that are like kind of implied i guess like higuruma's is somewhat implied like there are conditions that need to be met sure but that's still like a at least from if we go if we take yeah, statements no, no. at face value it is regardless of who you are if this touches you you die right um right but like let's i still say the necessitating of the four things happening in that way mind you there is like there could have been deviations at any of the steps that happened you know what i mean mm -hmm. But let's assume she needs these conditions for her technique to work and she can't just like blow a trumpet across the board and then everybody loses their curse technique because that seems like... Yeah, that seems oh, broken, it's right? se broken. Yeah, way too so broken. I'll put it like this. Uh, if, if the, if the um, like steps in order to activate her technique are very few, then no. There, or then yes, there might be a limit. No. If there are several steps that are very specific no, in nature... I think they're conditional. I think... I think they're going to be conditional based off who she's trying to use it on and what she's trying to use it I on. I think it'll be conditional regardless, and that's why its potency will be super high, personally. I think that's the only way to have the stakes be right. super high. I think like, it'll be like, you know, after you... Like, yeah, otherwise otherwise it's a matter of finding her and getting her to like use her technique on the box. Yeah. Assuming they could even get the fucking <laughs> prison realm. 
<laughs> which isn't even addressed in the story yet, which I fucking I can't wait until they like find her and then and then this is a Jujutsu Kaisen moment. I'm I'm making my own fan fiction on the fly. So it's gonna go like uh they find her, they fight her, they convince her, and she's gonna be like, Okay, I'll free Gojo. Pause, dot dot dot. Okay, where's the box? And then it's like just silence and they're like, Oh my god, we forgot the box. Oh, come on, that was funny. Uh, hilarious. Just about as funny as that uh the comedian guy in the manga. You know. Bro, thank dude, this is what I've always wanted. I've always wanted people to tell me how amazing I am, and I'm finally glad you're coming around to how the way how the way the world works, BR. Yeah, I mean, hey man, I I, I have to I in in light of this amazing comedic genius, I simply have to recognize it. This is why David Chappelle has been like on a wave recently. He's been trying. He he can sense me coming, dude. He's afraid. He's scared. He's running. He doesn't want to be embarrassed. I'm coming. <laughs> Damn, bro. All right, I I think this is a, like a natural stopping point because you know it's funny. Whenever you and I go into the weeds with JJK, it always uh kind of devolves into a very theoretical, very head y screaming match. Yeah. Like once we go past like that two and a half hour mark, which I don't mind. I find it insanely fun. I don't yeah. know about you, but uh. In this case, I think uh, I have to have to like force force us chill, and we'll probably do a part two of this yeah. <laughs> of this episode. Because <laughs> wh why wouldn't we? Yeah, right? not a lot of stuff to talk about. Yeah, like this isn't even the first time we've had this conversation. We just haven't recorded it on a podcast. Yeah, that's true. It is true. We have had a very okay. similar conversation to this before. Anyway, I got some closing thoughts I want to do before we sign off. The biggest one is I just want to quickly address the totally not Mark situation. Mm -hmm. uh, um, first of all. I'll, I want your take. Yeah, you, you go first. So, I mean, this is something that is, I feel like plagued any tubers for a very long time. I've dealt with, I can't say something of this magnitude before, but I have dealt with like having a channel jeopardized because of like false copyright issues and things of that nature. And I have to say, I know I saw his most recent video where he's like, he basically is going to like stop the boycotting of Toei himself at least. Um, because I, I, I can't remember exactly like the the reason off the tip of my tongue for some reason. But I mean, I do definitely agree that everything he brought up in his videos were definitive problems, and I do think that it really it's kind of a, a hard issue to 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 like address because it's not just a policy issue; it's like a legal one, right? And you know, when you're a YouTuber, yeah. you can't go up against a you know multi million dollar company like Toei, like. If, like, even if they're in the wrong, right, if you, like, if they take legal action, you will lose because you simply don't have deep enough pockets to deal with that. And that makes the, the problem really frustrating. But when you have um, a figure in the community like Total Mark deal with this and, and stand up for, well, I guess, like, shine as, like, this beacon in the community, I think it brings a lot of people together, as we saw with, you know, Toei, like, you know, fuck Toei or stop Toei going trending or whatever and Totally Not Mark situation going trending and stuff like that. Um, but that's my take personally. Yeah. I mean, my take is that I think it's insanely toxic to, uh, of Toei's part. And I think of, um, Japan culturally in that they seem a little fish, uh, fascistic in how they, uh, handle their properties. Mm. They almost seem like, very I mean, not even seem, but like very old fashioned, very possessive of what they perceive as like wholly and solely their own property mm -hmm. and you know it's only their property insofar as uh distributing and uh licensing mm -hmm. goes but not in discussion or reviewing yeah. like with that in mind i think that there definitely needs to be some kind of i don't know pr team or somebody over in these companies to tell them hey it's fine. It's okay. Chill the fuck out, yeah. right? But more than that, what I think is actually the bigger, more fundamental, and obvious, and more pressing issue is YouTube's copyright claim system. Mm. It's absolutely one hundred percent broken. It needs a, a complete overhaul, and it needs to stop favoring these fucking corporations by default every single time. And more than anything, what I I think needs to happen is that there needs to be consequences on the part of uh, YouTube or on the part of, you know, fair use law in that if a company does falsely strike something that is fair use or that is uh, obviously transformative, I think that there should be some kind of penalty like for you for a youtuber right it's all negatives you either get a strike you get demonetized you get so many things could could happen to you at any one of these steps right but even if you win every single thing you're now you're out all this money now you have uh this you, your videos killed algorithmically just just murdered any potential growth is just stopped at that point 
And then the company, they just walk away. Yeah. And I think that's the most egregious part. And instead of removing the fucking dislike button, I think that should be where YouTube's attention should lie. Yeah, I think also a very important thing is the response because YouTube, like, simply put, will not, like, get someone real. Like, not that's not a bot to talk to you about these things. Step. And I think part of that is, like, they need a better copyright system and they need, like, to have real people reviewing these things and have people prove that actual people are like are going over this because you know you i don't know if you've ever dealt with like you know you, you could copyright on like music or something like that you send in an appeal it, they can just reject it instantly and now you're stuck with having to yeah. possibly take legal action all those things right i think that you know the perpetrator saying yes you took my content out of fair use ha should have to have their things reviewed by an actual human being right that is able to determine like the fair use stuff and then if it doesn't fall under that, they send it back. Because I, don't, I think it's just far too easy. Like, if I wanted to, right? I could literally go onto my, my YouTube stuff, and I could just go onto your channel. Yeah, strike, 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 strike. He stole my content, right? That's it. Mm -hmm. And then, and then but, yeah. Bro, it, it just... even more egregious, even more egregious than that is, let's get specific to the Totally Not Mark situation, for example. He's not even allowed to block it in Japan because YouTube locks that feature down to fucking... MCNs and yeah. shit who have shown a history to be extremely exploitative to creators. They basically take a cut of their profits, an even bigger cut than YouTube's forty percent, and then taxes, and then basically do nothing. Yeah, do all you do so that the, in order the, to you know not have your life's work in jeopardy. Yeah, and it, it, it's it's unreal. Like like why would YouTube is essentially bankrolling? A predatory industry by preventing creators from independent creators from from choosing to be able to do this on their own whim yeah um yeah it's just a very like messy issue all around like it's never it's just such a i don't know to me it's such a difficult one to like navigate because of like the lack of influence youtubers will typically have at least in comparison to these these massive corporations and companies and things like that so what I'm wondering is uh, three things. One, are you doing like a soft toy bo boycott or are you just going to like never review a toy property on your channel? Like, like how are you like, I'm, I'll put it, like, have you like taken any of this as like a red flag or anything along those lines? Taking it as a red flag. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of like it's weird because the, the, the main person, the man of action himself, totally not Marcus, said he's retracting it. I'm guessing just for um, you know livelihood things like that. I already don't like One Piece, so I don't talk about that anyways. And I can't mm -hmm. recall the amount of times I've talked about Dragon Ball. I definitely will be safer than sorry on talking about either of those properties on my channel, um, on a mm -hmm. channel that I like care about or anything like that. So, that, um, but like watching shows, I mean, I'm just pirated, honestly. But I mean, not pirated, of course not. I'd I'd watch it legally. Um, link, link, yeah, imagine, exactly, because. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I have no idea what these winks and nudges Facts. mean. I, yeah, bro. Um, uh, but yeah, what anyway, about you? So, I, like, uh, I had originally planned to make Dragon Ball videos um, next year, and I guess those are just now on the back burner, which is a shame, because Dragon Ball is, like, the thing that got me into anime in the first place. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I told you the story before, but, uh, like, that's that, that'll be a thing for a different day. But, you know, even Toei's, like, predatory actions with Dragon Ball have also had, like, a, an effect on me with um, DBZA. Oh, yeah. Like, at the time that they were, like, flagging all their shit, just harassing the hell out of them. And, you know, this isn't even the first time that they've targeted Mark. It's very annoying. I'm personally... I'm not going to watch the new Dragon Ball movie, um, A, because I kind of forgot about it until all of this. I wasn't B, even, like, hyped for it, regardless of the Toei thing. Yeah, it it literally looks like a video game cutscene, man. Like the trailer just made me so sad. But like, bro, just read the manga. Like, like Toei has also shown that they don't really give a shit about Dragon Ball's canon anyway. Like, if you watch Dragon Ball Super, it's almost entirely different from reading Dragon Ball yeah. Super. Like the the entire Kefla fight didn't even happen in Dragon Ball Super. Yeah. Uh, the the manga. Yeah. It was it was just wild. Um. Anyway, yeah. Uh. I just wanted to give my two cents on that. Anyway, so guys, I hope you enjoyed episode five of the Honored Ones podcast. Uh, 
this was our uh, part one of our of hopefully many, you know, Knockwood Jujutsu Kaisen uh, episodes. So check out my Bleach video, guys. It's finally out. I expect each and every one of you to watch it, including UBR, uh, multiple times, in fact, all the way through. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on that video and on this podcast. Uh, subscribe to me and BR and uh, watch his most recent video, which I believe is the grading system explained for Jujutsu Kaisen. Yes, sir. Nailed. Yeah, look at that. Look at that right. nice transition. That was fire. Hell yeah, bro. All right. See you guys next week. Bye. Oh, yeah. Peace, peace out, guys. Uh, come back next week.